Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. This is TFT, of course, uh, and this is, what is this? Uh, this is the 17th of May, Oof. Uh, and uh, you know I'm a little disappointed because uh, last week I was doing shows and I was a week ahead and no one told me. You're supposed to look out for the old, your, your elderly. What are you guys doing? Right? I'm uh, usually behind. I'm, I don't know. I lost a week ahead. I jumped ahead for some reason, but I don't know. What do, what do you want? Uh, you know, uh, it's kind of hard when you're sitting at home and you're, you're trying to keep track of time. I got a calendar right next to me too. It's so embarrassing. Well, you're getting up there too. I know. God damn it. Uh, that's true. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> happy to have you guys here. Uh, we're going to have ourselves a good bit of fun. Uh, as you see, uh, I have, uh, titled the today show, uh, monoliths, obelisks and stone, uh, Milton William Cooper. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm really happy. We're going to get into talking about this gentleman. Uh, we'll get into that in a moment, of course. Uh, but, uh, we'd love for you guys to check out all the links down below, particularly to our fan speak on Facebook. Uh, it's a fun, uh, community. Go be part of that. Uh, also, uh, if you want to be on any of our shows, you have any ideas for the shows, or you want to be on the Drone Recorder, hit me up on my Twitter, and we'll get you through that process. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, we're live streamers, so, uh, you know, please hit that share button. That's what helps us the most. But uh, we're going to have fun today. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting show, uh, uh, spe- specifically because we've been, we've said several times on TFT, it's a bit spooky how everything ties in. And uh, today is definitely going to be spooky, for damn sure. Uh, so uh, let me come over here and introduce my panelists before we get into everything. And of course, uh, we have a uh, you know a prolific creator, a, a very uh, artistic with his hands guy who's actually efficient with his time. I don't know how those two things go together because, in my experience, artists are flaky as hell. Uh, but uh, hi, model. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing really well, dude. How is it that you actually could be punctual and on time? I mean, you're an artist. What's wrong with that? Um, it's something I learned in my 20s when I wasn't punctual and on time, and I suffered for it oh, greatly. Yeah. Oh. And it, it only took uh, losing out on a couple of opportunities and, and jobs to uh, mm-hmm. realize I needed to wire myself up a little tighter. But I did take on uh, supervisory roles and stuff with studios, so I kind of learned to, to get it together a little bit. No, it's good. I mean, it's better to be punctual. It's a, you get more done when you are. It's just, uh, I've been over here in this community for a while and I love these artists. I mean, I love it. Uh, but damn dude, Whew. you know, I've worked with hundreds of artists over the years and, um, they share very similar, uh, picadillos, if you will. They do. They definitely have a picadillo or two. Mm-hmm. I love that word. That's a good word. Uh, but all right. Thank you very much for being here, Model. And uh, you're ready for today's show, I am sure, right? I am. I, I love this topic. Uh, I I really, really like this gentleman a lot. Uh-huh. Well, of course, you, you do realize you you challenged me last week. So I, I, I did my research. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. That's good. Well, I, That's I always good. do my research, but you know what I mean. Uh, but anyway. Well, I was kind of surprised that you weren't already very familiar with so this gentleman. It, so am I. Actually, so am I. <laughs> uh, but we'll get into that when we we get into the topic. But uh, yeah, I, I, some uh, might say he's the tin foiliest. I would say he's the inception. Uh, but uh, anyway, we'll we'll get into that in a minute. We got to introduce our other panelist, uh, uh, and it looks like Ted Danson has joined us, which is nice. Uh, but uh, anyway, I got to do the proper introduction. So how should I do this in 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 homage to Mr. Cooper? Oh, I know. Here we go. A black edifice appears from the ground. Thousands of bees buzzing and humming can be heard. Primitives click and clack at it, touching it, unaware. Above, the mother and the father watch as lightning bolt strikes between them. As we look in the distance and the lightning comes to a halt, a mist of electrified essence appears and mollifying and becoming one we see the birth of the nubile thundero now that i'm a little turned on to be honest (laughs) that was by far your best one was it was it by far well thank you i appreciate it it quite good i left some i I left plenty of meat on that bone now come on now I gotta undo my top button here. <laughs> wait, a, wait a minute. He's talking about being turned on. You're talking about meaty bones. I don't know what show I walked in on, but I didn't sign up for this. 
<laughs> well, come on now. I just made an homage. What homage did I make? Uh, I don't know. Which one was it? Come on, model. I do not know. Uh, I do not know. Us. You stumped the panel. One Space Odyssey. Oh yeah, oh, see, I'm not familiar like enough once. with it to know. Yeah, I mean, it's been years and years and years. <laughs> well, I mean, I just spent a week researching uh, uh, Mr. Milton William Cooper, uh, so mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's uh, it's one of his favorite things. Uh, but uh, but anyway, 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 uh, I, I see that's what you do when you when you, you try to get all smart and fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. Read uh, your audience. That's all I'm saying. Read your audience. True. I should have made a Fonzie joke. That would probably went over better. Yeah, well. That uh, definitely would have went over better. I love the Fonzie. I'm like the I'm like the oldest thirty five year old in the world. I, I love fucking Happy Days. It's one of my favorite shows. Oh well Happy Days was a great show. I love that as well. Uh but uh I, I kinda wonder what Mr. Fun Cooper... start and stop things with a slam of my fist. That's oh yeah. Enough. He had magic. He is one That's possibly right. one of the hidden magi. It's possible. He had the magic of cool. Uh, I'm going to be dropping these references all day. You know, all day I'll be here. You guys you know, keep up. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, before we get into uh, Mr. Cooper, uh, do you guys have anything you want to talk about or kind of get out of the way ahead of time? Anything with the ongoing pandemic or whatever? No, uh, I, I don't think so. I think I'll wait till your, your intro and see what you hit and... Uh-huh. Nope, nope, I'm good. Right. Cool. Um, right. We're pretty much in the same spot we were last week and the week before and the week before. Yeah, uh, it's an ongoing, poorly handled mess. Well, yeah. I, I just on, thought on every off. level. It is. Uh, I do like the way it's uh, it's uh, starting to get to the point that uh, uh, political groups, particularly one group, uh, is truly starting to eat, eat each other uh, fantastically. Uh, I, and I'm kind of really surprised how unified... Uh, 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 the other group has become. So anyway, we don't need to get into that. That's not why we're here. Uh, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, let's see. Where does I want to go? <laughs> come over here and do this. I will say this, though, here while you're go. doing that. Mm-hmm. If if anything has come from this, this nonsense with this virus, um, it's the complete and utter red pilling of Elon Musk. Oh, he yeah. is dropping his mask. I think he's all in on... Something needs to happen in this country. Probably the boog. I mean, for crying out loud, he builds a truck that's bulletproof or was supposed to be bulletproof. That's electric, can run for 500 miles on one charge. He sells flamethrowers. Yeah. And then he openly Mm -hmm. defies the very communistic government of California and gets back to work himself and wins. Yeah. Well, he's not wrong. (sighs) I'm yeah. just saying, I think Elon might be a little bit more knowledgeable about things than he's letting on. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, and uh, he's not wrong, though. So it's all... It's all now, good. if Elon will blow the lid off this space nonsense, he'll win me over for good. Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> well, that's his he makes his money, so you probably might be holding your breath. He might hold on to that one for a while. I'm he sure. might, and of course, that kind of plays into exactly what we're talking about today, so... Uh... Interesting. Let's get right into it then. Uh, all right. So uh, uh, let, let me do this, and I'll, I'll come over to what I've sh- I, I prepare for you guys in a minute. But uh, just my little introduction, which is quite small. Uh, this is Milton William Cooper, born 1943, uh, passed away in 2001, and we'll be talking about uh, his passing away more than his uh, arrival, I would say. Uh, but um, as you see here, it says Milton predicted 9/11. Well. This fella right here is because, uh, as you guys know, last week I didn't know who he was, uh, and I didn't. I truly didn't. Even when I got in research, I was thinking, ah, maybe I know who he is. I just kind of forgot. Uh, but no, I had no clue who this person was at all. I've never seen him before and never heard of him before. And I understand why, uh, because when he really hit his stride was in the early 90s. And, of course, by 9-11, he'd uh, been uh, uh, kind of knocked off by the uh, authorities. Uh, and, and it seems like, you know, we'll get into that, but it's seems like he was definitely knocked off by the authorities but uh, you know what is interesting he predicted exactly he the did. way he, he did. said they're going to come to my house they're going to shoot me on my front steps and that's exactly what happened it is it is exactly what happened and uh uh the, the, and i understand why i missed him uh because i was you know running around the world at that time 
So, uh, you know, it's, uh, I was just doing my thing. I wasn't really watching TV. I wasn't doing anything. I didn't really get into the internet until later, to be honest with you. Uh, even though I was very, well, not very, but rather, uh, computer savvy from, uh, uh my childhood. Uh, but, uh, I, I get why I missed him. Uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, and his death on November 5th, 2001, people, most people will put that together. That, that was less than two months after 9-11. It was. It was. And uh, uh, this thing about him predicting 9-11, the thing I wanted to say about it was he predicted a lot of things. And he was mm-hmm. rather accurate. I mean, uh, I mean, above 90% in his accuracy, actually, which is impressive. Well, he was, a, uh, he was on the Naval Intelligence Committee. He was a spook. He was. He was. So he wasn't just a rando, you know, like Alex. Like he wasn't a character like Alex Jones. He well, was actually someone with ties who was... Uh, probably privy to a lot of information and also was able to be fed a lot of information. And then he went out on his own and he understood that uh, he himself was being fed misinformation in that position. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, good on him for uh, uh, pushing along and uh, looking into that stuff. And, um, uh, you know, I think uh, one of the things about him that I I find very interesting um, and, uh, uh, you know, is the fact that he's obviously very well read. Uh, and it's too bad he didn't make it because in this age of YouTube, he would have been a superstar. He would have been absolutely, a um, absolutely, yeah. And uh, Alex Jones is clearly a take on him. You know, uh, they don't accredit him to Alex Jones, but obviously Alex was listening to his radio show, dude. It's clear. It's clear. Um, and uh, memory, and several other people too. Uh, when I was joking earlier that I think he's the inception, obviously there were people writing books about these things beforehand, of course. Uh, but uh, as far as the radio, and then of course coming into our YouTube radio, uh, I really think he's one of the very first conspiracy theorists. I mean, he's up there with as far as uh, the way he presented the information. Uh, you know, the interesting thing about Alex Jones, Alex was nothing before Y two K. He really came to prominence selling the, you know, the fear of you better have a generator. And before that, Alex Jones was really nothing. So from uh, that short period of time from Y2K to 9-11, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. And living through that period of time, uh, there wasn't really that much to notice. So you had things that were going on, like Art Bell was very prominent on sure. the internet. That's right. Um, Ross Perot. With his, yeah, and and you know people were definitely aware at that time of um, kind of some of the holdovers that happened in the '90s from the Clintons. You definitely had the uh, the militia people were in an uproar. You had all the kind of leftovers from Waco and Ruby Ridge and all that. Yep. So there was that of that government overreach that people were really concerned about. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think people were th- at that time, the mindset was, thank God, now we've got uh, a Republican in the White House, as far as on the conspiracy, though, of course, the other side, they didn't feel so great about it. But right. um, as we were soon to very soon to find out, uh, Bush Jr. was not much different than anyone else uh, that was running against him. They, you know, no. we've kind of, that's, I would say around that point, um, you know, looking back at the Clinton presidency after some of the, what has happened after, Clinton wasn't that bad of a president. He was no. kind of a clown, but he was, uh, he was a decent president. Uh, he, maybe he shouldn't use his interns for a humidor and things like that. Uh, I didn't agree with the, the stance on the uh, the assault weapons ban that was foolish and unnecessary. It accomplished nothing. True, and, and I also don't agree with his wiretapping the entire freaking country. Uh, sure, that but out. that's when a lot of that stuff really got ramped up, and then, but essentially, you know, Bush Jr. came in, and it was just a continuation and a ramp up. Oh no, he and doubled it has down been on that ever since. <laughs> Yeah, it has been ever since. It went right into uh, President Obama. And now, as I I think a lot of people are starting to see, it's kind of business as usual with President Trump as well. Well, we had 24 years of uh, liberal leadership. That is clear. 
that is clear. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, I want to stick more on uh, uh, Mr. Cooper's uh, take on things, because uh, all those things definitely apply to, to Mr. Cooper, of course. Uh, but um, uh, let's kind of stick on his brain in particular. Um, now, when I was going through and doing the research this week, uh, which was a lot of fun, and these guys were 100% right. I didn't know who he was, uh, and they were very pleased about that, that Chester didn't know something. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but, uh, so I took it upon myself to make sure that I had enough ammunition to destroy them and break their wills. Just so you know, anyway. Uh, but, uh, uh, one thing I noticed with him, uh, and of course he's a radio guy. He's not a YouTube guy. He was, he died before that. And we'll get into his death here, uh, soon. Uh, but, uh, one of the things I noticed about him, he says a lot of things that I never hear YouTubers say. And I actually clapped once or twice while listening to his uh, his his radio cast, dude. Um, because he little little things like um, uh, he does a lot of historical stuff, which you guys know I love. Um, and because uh, he what what he's basically doing, let, 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 can I can I sum up what his whole shtick is, if if you guys don't mind? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, what he this guy was in a position uh, uh, of information. Uh, where he was working uh, for the, um, uh, uh, the f- I think, I forget what it was, Pacific or Atlantic Fleet boss. And uh, he was one of the per- people to get all the top secret stuff and pre- prepares it for the Admiral to uh, uh, make his decisions, right? So he was in that kind of position. And he saw a lot of freaky stuff. And he went and started, after he retired uh, out of the Navy, he went and started doing a lot of research to try to understand what it is he had seen. And this took him in a very interesting direction. Uh, And what he is basically saying is this. The mystery schools have been around since the dawn of time. And they are still here. And their intention is to create a socialist utopia. Now... During that, during, in in amongst that, now that's the that's the basically basically what he's saying and what he's talking about. There, there it is, done, right? Uh, but in amongst that, he has said a lot of he said a lot of things that I never hear these YouTubers say, and they're, and they're quite accurate things too. Like for instance, uh, the uh, the the my- mystical schools or the uh, magical schools or mystery schools, whatever you want to call them, they have been around for a very long time, and they probably have been since the dawn of time. Um, and um, you know, uh, one of the facts of the uh, of those things is that uh, the Christians, you know, the Catholics, we should stay with the beginning creation of them uh, uh, through Constantine and his later or- orchestration and. Uh, uh, dissolution of the Catholic truth. Um, they are basically the 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 mystery school of Mistra, and they took that whole cloth and then just painted on their own slight style change. Uh, and therefore, all the things you read in your Bible, all those things you know, uh, those are a mystery school of the past. The problem is what he's saying, and he's probably right, uh, is uh, that the actual mystery schools are offended by this because they they feel that it is a uh, it is a distortion of their belief, right? Now I'm not going to get into every little teeny thing because it would take hours and hours and hours. I watched hours of this. Listen to this guy. Watch. I listened to hours of this guy, uh, and it would take a lot to get into every detail. But let me just mention a couple little things that he said that thrilled me because I don't hear YouTubers talking about it. One is with the mystery schools and the fact that uh, Christianity is nothing but the mystery school of Mistra that has been carried along and made public, right? Uh, that's true. Another, th- just little teeny things he said, uh, like for instance, <clears throat> something I've never heard a YouTuber say, and uh, I was just, I literally clapped when he said this, um, is uh, something that a lot of people don't understand. Uh, in ancient Egypt, uh, of course, Isis, the moon, the mother, uh, she's a very important figure. You guys understand that, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, well, uh, uh, a lot of things, uh, another thing people don't understand is later, uh, and uh, by the way, for the past two decades, I've been doing a lesson uh, on uh, where the alphabet comes from. And I go through this, uh, you know, this is a two-hour lesson, and it deals with the alphabet and how all our letters started in Egypt and how they became what they are today, A, B, C, all those things like that. They actually come from what you would consider a hieroglyphic of uh, ancient Egypt. Uh, and I 
just I've been doing this for a couple decades in my classes, um, and uh, so I know these things quite well. And uh, of course, the I kind of uh, um, morphed and evolved into becoming what we what we use as a J, right? Um, and uh, when the Romans got a hold of it, the Latins, of course, and they were doing their translations from the uh, Septuagint, which, of course, is the Greek translation of the Bible, uh, or, or not translation, it's an organization of the Bible. Um, uh, they were using the later Egyptian J. Now, uh, of course, Isis, but if you are pronouncing it under a Roman way, which, of course, we as English speakers still use the J in this way, it wasn't Isis, it was Jesus, right? And this is very true. That's where the word Jesus comes from. Not Yesh, not Yeshua, not Isus. Those are completely different people and they're different conversation. I'm talking about Jesus, the word we use to represent the, uh, the son, right? Uh, and uh, uh, he knew that. And he put that out. I've never heard another YouTuber ever say that, dude. So my point being is he's he really is well studied. And uh, it was very, really a lot of fun listening to him. And he's not perfect. Uh, he's, he's made some mistakes here or there uh, in his historical stuff. But, I mean, who is, right? Um, because in the end, where he got to was a unified theory. And that's what I thought was pretty interesting. Um, I mean, there's plenty of other things popping in my head, but I wanna, don't want to waste time on it. I just want to kind of say that I was fairly impressed by this guy. Uh, he's a really good researcher. And uh, I guess the next conversation would be coming to these guys and try to understand where the truth might lie, however. Uh, so uh, let me, uh, before I get into some of the other things I want to share, uh, let's let these guys kind of take uh, the idea that this guy is a, an actual researcher. <clears throat> yeah, he absolutely was. Um, he, the things he knew and the things he would bring up were rather impressive. For for a big portion of it, he was very much UFO guy for a while. Like he was very into that. But he stopped being that in the I would say probably mid nineties ish, um, and focused more on you know like patriotism, mm -hmm. uh, you know, international communism or what we would call globalism. Um, trying to take over and set up a one-world government, top-down government, yeah, very similar to what we see in China, uh, but worldwide. And he would he would mention these things long before Alex Jones ever mentioned them. And people have said for years, and Alex has you know rebuffed these people, and even sometimes very angrily rebuffed these people, that Alex is just a you know a copy of him. He's just taking his stuff and and regurgitating it, and da da da. -da. And that's probably partially true. But it's also possible that they just came to the same conclusion. They looked at the same information and came to the same conclusion. Um, or Alex is just complete BS. That's possible too. There's no way to really know unless you can get inside of his head and you know dissect it. But the reality is, is, is Cooper um, was absolutely a researcher. Like you said, like like you said, his one of his things that he would present was simple things like linguistics, like you were talking about, yeah. and the origin of words and where that comes from and why that matters. Um, people haven't really changed much in 10,000 years. We like to think we have, but we really haven't. We've gotten a little smarter compared to people 10, on average compared to people 10,000 years ago, but the elites have always been really smart. That's why they were the elites. As long as civilizations existed, there have been very smart people doing incredible things for what the knowledge they had at the time. Um, very few people are actually, you know, incredible, genuinely incredible, and have a lasting legacy and are remembered. Uh, people could name most of them right off the top of their head. But the reality is, people have pretty much been the same. Most people are, on average, dumb. They just are. They have a low IQ compared to the upper echelons of people. Um, you have to understand, think about it, somebody with 150 IQ if they're talking to somebody with a hundred IQ, that's like talking to a child compared oh, to God. them. That's how fast they can learn. Um, Tell me about it. Oh, God, <laughs> but you have to think about it. Like that's it, it's very similar. Now, obviously, somebody with a hundred IQ, there's thresholds for communication and, and you know linguistics and things. But even still, comparatively, that's about as close to a comparison as you're going to get. So these people have always existed, and they've always been incredibly intelligent. I actually just, this, it's funny that we were talking about this. Egypt, I just saw a picture from a mummy that I'd never seen before. I didn't even know they were this advanced. They could do complicated dental work, including braces. Oh, they yeah. have found mummies with braces. Oh, dude, they did brain surgery. Yeah, 
So they knew far more than we realize. And in order to be able to do these things, they had to be very intelligent. And they were. Humans haven't really changed that much. Our, our lifestyle has changed and it's starting to change us, I think, for the worse because it's become so soft and so easy. But it wasn't for the last, you know, until maybe 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 70, whatever, 100 years. Let's go back 100. We'll just round, nice round number of 100. Um, life was still pretty hard for most people on the planet. It, and in actuality, poverty hasn't only, like, actual genuine destitution poverty hasn't gone away until... It's not gone all the way, but for most of the world, it is. You know, people have been brought up out of it, and there's there's still starvation and things that happen, but it's much lower than it was even ten years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, so my know, point is, is, when you go back to something like linguistics, it's very important. It's not yeah. what people say; it's why they say it. And linguistics will teach you that because it'll teach you where those sounds coming from, where they come from, yeah. why people make certain sounds for certain to represent certain certain things. It's very scientific, and it's tested all the time, because if I go out there and start using the word the wrong, people are going to be, what the fuck, this guy's freaking crazy, what's he doing? Yeah. But th these, these types of things matter. There's a reason why so many of these words sound the same, in our, and some of them are even still used today when, oh, we, yeah. when we think about it. Sure. it it's impressive. And th like my point is, is, is the time frame isn't that long. People think 10,000 years is a long time. In the history of humanity, it's nothing. It's a blip. Yep, and he makes this point as well. Uh, but yeah, yes. no, tons of little things, dude. Um, uh, you know, he of course he talked about the standard stuff. I think a lot of people understand, like uh, Horizon, Horace's steps, of course, across the uh, uh, across the day, the hour. It comes from Horace as well, uh, and Horace yep. represents the the young sun. And one thing that he really put forward uh, in his setup to get to where he was talking about the mystery schools are in charge of modern day because he he was very smart in many of because I watched that time of the hour i watched a bunch of those i watched his uh mystery 12 series uh i watched a whole bunch of stuff from him uh and the in the hour of time was really well set up it started in what 92 93 uh and uh it's 42 episodes which I, which I haven't watched all but i will um and he set it up really well and he started in the beginning right um and, and just uh, a time reference for like a a just a, a reference for people listening. Uh, William Cooper kind of came to prominence and talking about UFOs in 1988. So this guy was around a long time before uh, Alex Jones. Oh, he was. And like and, you say, early 90s, he started doing the hour of the time uh, on shortwave. He was actually broadcasting from his house. He was. Yeah. And it's a fantastic show. If you guys like conspiracy and stuff like that, if you got into the old art bells and stuff, you'll really like the hour of the time. And you can find them, lots of them. Oh, sure. And uh, uh, like I said, I found 42 episodes. But uh, uh, the reason why I was talking, I'm, I'm more concentrating on hour of the time than his earlier stuff is because when he put together the hour of the time, he got to the point that I think he'd unified his theory in his mind. And he actually was not a UFO guy. Or he at least he became not a UFO guy. He was very anti-UFO. He believed Correct. it's all a big sham. And yep. he puts forward and a lot of reasons what, why. That's why I, one of the reasons why I really respected him, because he was a big UFO guy in, in the late 80s and going into the early 90s. And then he changed. Because... um. I, I I don't buy any of that UFO stuff either. Not as far as extraterrestrial, I don't. Definitely, on a, of course, there are unidentified. There are things we don't understand. There are natural phenomena. Of course, of course. Yeah, it's true. Uh, but, um, oh, we got to look in here. Uh, but uh, I just came back over this side for a little while. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, this guy, uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about watching his stuff was the fact that he was very honest about his mistakes. You're right. Uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, but uh, I was just really impressed with his uh, laying down of uh, the historical steps that brought us to where we are today. And they were fairly accurate. I mean, you got to understand, I mean, I, I listen to YouTube stuff a lot uh, while I'm working. Right. I kind of it's a, for me, YouTube's like a radio. I don't really watch the visuals very often. I just kind of have it running on the side as I'm working on other things. Uh, and uh, I've listened to a whole bunch of YouTube stuff and I, and I find it entertaining. But it's God, it's inaccurate, dude. It's so inaccurate. These people sure, talking about absolutely. ancient times and this word came from that. And it's like, no, it didn't. You dumbass. Right. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I'm with you. I consume massive, massive amounts of uh 
online content because I need background noise while I work. Yeah, so all yeah. day long, I'm just letting vi- I'm going from video to video or this podcast to this podcast. And, yeah. and, no, and you're right, but, but YouTube channels have become kind of a business as well. And it's not always in the interest of providing good information as to c- provide more information and continual information. Sure. And I'm not knocking those YouTubes. It's fun. It's entertainment. Right, I don't. It's fine, uh, but I actually remember one time a few years back. I was watching. I had the YouTube was on. I was listening to some guy talking about ancient history, and uh, he actually started to get into where our language today came from and how they use it. The aliens, of course, uh, how they use it to uh, uh, control us and such like that. And he's talking about uh, Mesopotamia. Right. And uh, how that language has infused in our world. And yada, yada. I was literally translating an Akkadian script while he was saying that. Right. And I was like, God, you're stupid, man. Uh, because, you know, our language comes from Egypt. Our, the English language, its evolution starts in Egypt, not Mesopotamia. And, uh, you know, I'm literally translating, and it was like a receipt or something. It was nothing important. Uh, but I was literally translating in Akkadian, which is, you know, Mesopotamian, right? Uh, uh, a piece while I'm listening to it, <laughs> this guy talking about it. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, man. Uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> it does, that means nothing. Uh, but uh, the, the point is, I have a little bit of respect for this guy. And I didn't know him a week ago. Right, but I know him well now. And the thing is, these guys said, uh, you know, told him about. It. I said I didn't know him, but actually, I do know him. I know him really well uh, because I know that voice, not him particularly, but the, the 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 people who are trying to show us that there is a group of people in the world today who, whether you believe it or not, they believe it, mm. and they are following an agenda. And yes. those, we need more and more of those voices because it's true. It is true. Uh, we've talked about the Saturnist over here. He's, he, he prefers to call them the Luciferians uh, or Illuminati, which is fine. Uh, and, and the truth is they've had lots of names over the past uh, uh, couple of hundred years. And, and the interesting thing I found with his, uh, he never really mentioned this particularly, uh, but I got what he was going after because over the past couple hundred years, the elites of our Western world, they've actually written a bunch of books which you can go and find and read. I mean, from Darwin to, uh, uh, you know, the, the, of course, the Rothschild kids and uh, et cetera, et cetera, even Astor. Uh, and you go read those books and they're talking about an agenda. And if you look at the agenda they're talking about in these books, and like I said, they're not even hiding it. They have been 100% successful, guys. And Chester, you said something, too, that I think is very important. Mm. You said it doesn't matter if you believe it. It matters that they believe it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, like, you may not believe that uh, that you will actually get 72 virgins if you blow yourself up. Yeah. But peace, some people do, and you better pay attention. Right? Well, you may not believe in any of that, but I, these these people that are in in the shadows... They absolutely de- uh, believe that they have a divine power over humanity. Well, and, and that you know, it is theirs to do with yeah. what they please. And, and of course, the, 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 those 27% of Islam, which is a, a lot of people when you do the math, uh, but that 27% who agree with the terrorists and follow the kind of uh, destructive form of uh, is uh, uh, you know Islam itself, or you know I, I, I'm not saying Muslims because it's a kind of a you have to dis- uh, distinguish between the two, uh, but that 27% they don't even understand what they're reading because their imams are lying to them. Uh, that whole virgin thing doesn't even apply the way that they're 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 trying to apply it. Right. It's kind of like, you know, let's go this way, for instance. Uh, And this comes back to Mr. Cooper. Uh, Show me now uh, and I know we have Christians in here and understand I don't knock on religious people. at all. You know, I don't. Uh, If if the religion makes your life better and gives you focus and discipline, I'm happy for you. And I think we need more of it in the in the world today, to be honest with you. Uh, But uh, let, let me ask you a simple little question that's going to irritate the hell out of you. Show me where in the Bible it talks about the father the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It doesn't. It's in the it Lord's Prayer. Yeah, it doesn't It doesn't exist at all. It's not in there. Right? The Bible doesn't talk about a lot of things, like the it rapture doesn't. and all. I mean, it's just, uh, but um, but you're right. But, you know, the, the point is, is that 
people do believe that stuff. They do. And, and, and like I said, it depends on what you do with your belief, right? If it's something well, that enriches the... your life, that's a good thing. But uh, let me just finish real quick, Thunder, and I'll come right to you. Uh, but the okay. thing the thing with the, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you can understand where that's coming from. That's coming from God, right, uh, the earth, and water. It's talking about the witnesses, right? And it has nothing to do with actual, with the way it's used in modern Christianity at all. Uh, and uh, the reason I mentioned this one particularly, because this is something that uh, Mr. Cooper uh, would take uh, a, probably a three-hour segment and talk about, right? And get into how you came to misunderstanding that, how it's been misused, and how in truth it's a mystery school understanding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Go ahead, Thundera. Oh, you pretty much said it. Um, one of the references that a modern Christians will use, as I grew up a Christian for most of my life, oh, me too. is very much, very right at the beginning, um, the God references himself as R, as multiple, in a plural. Sure. And they will say that this is the evidence that the Trinity is a Trinity, that they exist as one, three beings as one, three separate beings as one. Mm -hmm. But there is really, you're, you're completely right. They, it's never stated that that is the existence of God. What is stated is we don't know, and you will never know until you're face to face with him. That's what the Bible clearly says. Um, you you'll never know his you know him that way you just can't you're, you're not capable it's something your brain isn't capable of doing so i i've all, i've often taken umbrage with that uh it's one of the reasons i'm not a christian anymore because when you bring things like that up many christians just get defensive and go into large screeds about you know you don't have right faith or whatever instead of actually trying to understand what you're saying to them you're not saying that the god isn't real what you're saying is you're being lied to you're being tricked now, whether the people are doing it intentionally or not, most of them aren't. They, no. they, they, they genuinely believe. They're just they they don't have an understanding of linguistics. They don't have, a, which is a very important topic that I think we need to we need to hit on more often. It's it's probably the most important uh, science when it comes to understanding how people behave and why these people like the that you're talking about do what they do. Hmm. Um, but anyway, we'll get back to that in a minute. But they don't have that understanding, and it's because they're they're just they're ignorant to it that they've never been taught it they've never looked at it they never most christians can't read hebrew they can't translate from hebrew so how are they going to use genesis and someone else's translation as evidence of their belief oh don't it's, get me on genesis dude don't do it don't do it <laughs> it's, a, it's just a, my point is is people need to learn how to do these things them, themselves it's actually not that hard hebrew isn't super complicated no um it's no. a very it's actually quite similar to our language uh, the sounds are very similar. They, Gee, they, they I wonder function. why. Yeah, there's a reason for this. They function very similarly. Sim sim I can't even say that word. They function very similar. Um, so it's not that hard. If, if you spend some time with it, I bet most people could do it in a few months. Easy. Sure. At least to the basic stuff. Right? You might not be able to get perfect conjugation, but you'll get the gist of what you're reading. Uh -huh. Um, well, Greek is the same way. Latin is the same way. They're not as hard as people think they are. They're pretty no. similar languages, really. No, they aren't. And of course, they're they're just a, a evolution of themselves anyway. Uh, but um, yeah. uh, uh, the metal says something here pretty interesting. Uh, he says uh, the R we is better understood through the ancient Hebrew Yahweh Elohim, uh, which talks about the plurality of God as balance, uh, bo uh, uh, being both El and Elo uh, uh, Eloha. Uh, uh, well, there's a lot of little things in there that. Uh, are true and not true metal. Uh, for instance, um, one of the things that confuses a lot of people uh, is uh, is a misunderstanding of how the Bible came to be. Right uh, now, the Torah uh, and the uh, the old books, you know, the Jewish books, uh, those things are actually just uh, translations from earlier times. And uh, what happened was the uh, Jews uh, had were under captivity, or the Hebrews, I'm sorry, let me use the proper word, uh, were under captivity in Babylon at the time, their leadership. And uh, at that time, they didn't understand how God, uh, what they had done wrong, and God had allowed them to be defeated. Uh, they truly believed that they were protected by God. Uh, and therefore, they needed to do a couple things to appease God. Uh, one of those things was as an apology to God for their their lack of faith or their you know uh, you know falling or trailing off the path uh, was of course circumcision. That's where it comes from. It has nothing to do with cleanliness whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I always get a, 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 a chuckle out of uh, out of Christians who's if you're not circumcised, they go, "Ew, that's disgusting." And it's like, "Oh, you know better than God, then, huh?" 
You know how to perfect the creation of God's body? Oh, that's very interesting. Good for you. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's where it came out of. The other thing came out of it was the Torah. Because up until that time, uh, they had uh, just a collection of things, and it wasn't in a single book. Uh, and it was there that they put it in. you got to understand why the Babylonians had attacked and conquered them. Because the Babylonians, of course, were a polytheistic, as everyone was, including the Hebrews at that time, to be honest with you. Uh, but they were so laser-focused on Marduk. Uh, that uh, they would not tolerate any other gods being held above Marduk, right? And the Jews were like, you know, in their face, no, we're going to worship all our gods, and they were very arrogant. Uh, And the Babylonians attacked them. Right or wrong, that's what happened. Uh, And while in captivity, they wrote their Bible, the Torah, the Old Testament, well, a big chunk of it anyway, uh, in uh, in a sense, uh, to kind of hide their polytheism. Right, and people don't understand this at all. Another thing people don't really understand is that the New Testament was put together by the Greeks hundreds of years after the the lives of those people. None of those books, not Matthew, not Luke, not Timothy, none of that was actually written by them. It was written by other people. It was a collection of old tales and and stories of their life that was put together by a bunch of Greeks. Right? It wasn't written in their in their words at all. Um, and uh, like, for instance, let me give an example. Uh, Genesis. Now, uh, when the Greeks were putting together, putting this all together, because they had to take the Torah and the other pieces uh, uh, with all the stories of uh, uh, Christ and his disciples and apostles. And by the way, there were several females that were involved with Jesus, and it was the Catholics that cut the women out, not the Greeks. If you go read the original Greek, which I have. Uh, you will find there's many females in there. Uh, But nevertheless, uh, let me give you a thing of the Genesis story and the original uh, Adam and Eve story. Now, a lot of you probably think uh, that uh, uh, there were two Eves. One was called, uh, the the modern thinking is, is calling her Lilith, and uh, she refused to get on the bottom, and therefore uh, she was kicked out, and God felt bad for Adam, so he put him to sleep and uh, took his rib and made Eve. That's not true at all. That's not even a little bit true true, right? Uh, What it was is there were two separate writers of those stories. And instead of choosing one, they decided to just put both stories in there. So uh, what you have is two creation stories of man. Uh, and They're not separate. They're not one happened and the other happened. They're the same story, just told by different writers, different authors. Uh, there's many things like this throughout the Bible. Um, and uh, this is why people like myself who study these things, uh, we much prefer to read the older things. Like for me, I'd much rather read the Enuma Elish uh, rather than reading Genesis. Right, because it's older, it's more accurate, and even that is saying it's a copy of a copy of a copy from the antediluvian times. They even say that, and this is ancient, ancient Sumeria talking about ancient, ancient times. Uh, that's much more fascinating from my point of view. And, and anyway, I, I think I made my point. Did I make can my I, point? Can I say something? Sure. You guys are very difficult to do a show with. Why? <laughs> You are just near impossible to stay on a topic. I am on topic, dude. No, I am on topic because this is exactly the type of thing Mr. Cooper would point out. Correct. Yeah. What do you mean? I, I'm completely on topic. You are, yeah. Yeah, he definitely is. He's the best at it. He stays right on there like a razor. He's just right on that thing. Um, no, yeah, I, I agree with Chester here. I think this is on topic because Mr. Cooper would speak often about the intricacies of these things and how woven into our very basic communication. Mm-hmm. Um, their magic, their power, if you will, the people that he would talk about is controlling communication, is understanding the power of, of language. Sure. It is the ultimate weapon. It is a human superpower. It's one of the things, it's probably the reason why we dominate the planet is because we were capable of communicating it at a much more advanced level than any other creature as, we, as far as we know sure. on this planet. Um, and, and of course, extremely powerful. And of course, Mr. Cooper uh, definitely applied the idea and the ancient understanding uh, that the word magic is simply the old word for science, and that's yes. true, right? Uh, so you know, and and the priests of the mystery schools are the ones who controlled everything, and he really pushes that idea. Uh, but uh, I guess we should pull it uh, back more to the modern time. I'm sorry, model. You know the old stuff makes <laughs> it gets me all all stiffy and stuff. I you know. <laughs> 
I, I just next thing we're you know we're gonna be talking about like a comic book movie or something. I just want. Oh no 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 no! I get, no. I get I, nervous. I, I was know, on I topic. Nervous. I was on topic. Uh, I was just trying to make a point. Uh, 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 you know the point, the kind of points he would make uh, regarding these things, and you have to understand uh, the use of language, how things have evolved to where we are today, and the stories they tell you, and how they twisted those stories to their understanding. Because one thing Mr. Cooper was very clear about uh, was the fact that uh, although he doesn't really care about any denomination or anything like that, he does live his life by the words of Jesus. And he is yep. really, he is a, a believer in and of that way, uh, and uh, he he just really would lay forward how these mystery school people hate the Christians because they feel like they that the Christians one release their mysteries publicly one and two bastardize their vision, uh, and that's important. Our language has been completely corrupted. Oh yeah, yes, uh, especially in the last twenty or thirty years, it's been turned inside out. The uh, the comparison to Orwell's 1984 Newspeak is right on target. Mm. And mm. That that was more of a prophecy than anything, and the memory hole, and you know, this, it it really is uh, astonishing. It is, and and I know uh, I have a few other things I want to talk about, but those are more wrap up things. Uh, so uh, uh, I will I'll save that for later, which is this thing I'm sharing with you guys. But I'll get to that later. Uh, now, model, you said you had some little clips you'd like to play, and I think that's a great idea. So why don't we do? I that? did send you I did send you something time stamped in Twitter DM. Okay, uh, you sent it to Twitter. All right, let me go over right. here and uh, let's see where I'll, I'll I'll go over here and get it. All right. So there's going to be like some nerd on the screen, but it goes into Cooper right after. I had to kind of go back a little bit. Oh, no, no problem. Well, uh, while I was earlier today, while we were, before we did this, I was watching some of his predictions like 9-11 and things. And it's scary how I That's what this is. This is the 9-11 oh, prediction. I, Three or four months before. Now how yeah. would I make that full? How would I do that? I could do like this maybe or like that. No, I don't want to do that. Huh. Whatever your Rolling Stone screen is, if you replace that, it should do it, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to bring it up onto. Uh, here, I got it. I figured it out. I'm not a boomer. I'm not. <laughs> all right, here we go. I got to figure it out. Uh, all right, let me do like this, and let me bring this over here like that, and do like that, and uh, uh, then I do like that, and then I'm going to do like that. And okay. Cool. So what I got to do is come back and I got to share differently though, because they can see it, but you guys can't see it. So let me, let me, I'm fixing it. Just give me a second. Uh, doing it live. Doing it live. All right. Let's, uh, it doesn't want to disconnect me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. It doesn't want me to disconnect. You guys still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if it's because you're streaming through the OBS and it's got it locked in. Maybe it does. Uh, but it doesn't want to. Do it. Oh, that's okay. I'll play it on the other side. Well, for they these can guys. see it. Yeah, they that, can see it. You guys just watch it on the other side with them. I'll listen to it. Yeah. And uh, it'll just be behind a little bit. The thing besides okay. what he talked about in the novel, what, right. what he talked about throughout his radio broadcast, because he was, a, you know, like they said, an original Alex Jones. He had his radio show. He had his, uh, you know, secret transmission where he would say black helicopters are flying. He set the stage and he would be somewhat of a performer in that way. Mm. But when you say, well, there weren't black helicopters flying over his house, there weren't all these things happening. Uh, <laughs> man, when you look at right here, I'm going to read it from these articles. Uh, he offered a prediction of 9-11 in June of 2001. And now we're being bombarded with messages that Osama bin Laden is planning to attack the United States of America and Israel. And I'm telling you, be prepared for a major attack. But it won't be Osama bin Laden. It will be those behind the New World Order who once again want to take the guns and the freedom away from the American people because we're the only ones left in the world who can oppose the destruction of freedom in the world and the implementation of a one-world totalitarian socialist government, and that is the goal. Now, how stupid can you be to believe that Timothy McVeigh was the mastermind of the destruction of the Alfred P. Mura Federal Building in Oklahoma City, and just he and Terry Nichols, who appears to be somewhat of a fool, plotted, planned, 
obtained all the different materials, put together a bomb of such force that it brought down what we call in the military a hard target, a target held up by steel, reinforced, concrete, columns, and he had no help. They're doing the same thing today with Osama bin Laden, and that's where I've been getting at. Can you believe what you have been seeing on CNN today, ladies and gentlemen? Can you believe it? <laughs> Supposedly, a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden, took a television camera crew with him, went into Osama bin Laden's hideout, interviewed him and his top leadership, his top lieutenants and colonels and generals in their hideout. This is a CNN reporter with a camera crew. And he came out and told everybody, within three weeks, Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel. Now, don't you think that's kind of strange, folks? You see, because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world with the biggest budget in the history of the world, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years and can't find him. The FBI also, under the leadership of Louis Free, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years and years and years and many years and can't find him. Some doofus, jerk-off reporter with a camera crew waltzes right into his hideout and interviews him. And you know what his budget is? <laughs> Zip, zilch, nothing. Now, that tells us two things. Either everyone in the intelligence community and all of the intelligence agencies of the United States government are blithering idiots and incompetent fools, including the entire apparatus of the FBI and all of their personnel, or they're lying to us. They're not looking for him at all. And the second is the truth. You see, the CIA created Osama bin Laden. True. They recruited him. They trained him. They found his leadership. They brought them all together. They showed him them how to fight the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. And when that was over, they still continued to fund him and train him. And they're now using him to help bring about world government by making him the big boogeyman because they can't use Saddam Hussein anymore. Did you ever hear of Osama bin Laden before you heard of Saddam Hussein? When did you start hearing of Osama bin Laden? It was after Saddam Hussein and Iraq were supposedly neutralized in the Gulf War. Because they needed a new boogeyman. But they're not looking for Osama bin Laden because I'm telling you right now. You can probably cut that now. It's going to continue into. Because it jumped there from an earlier time into uh, the present of that time. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think it's a very good uh, look at uh, the at the type of the way he speaks and the things he does. Um, and, um, you know, a, a lot of people talk about, uh, you know, uh, how accurate he was in his predictions and that he predicted 9-11. But just listening to that, he didn't predict anything. He took data and crunched it, right? There's no prediction going on here. There's no pro pro uh, pro prognosticating. Well, uh, three months later, he said data. there's a major, he said there's a major event, a major attack on the United States coming, and they're going to blame it on Osama bin Laden. I, I would call that a prediction. Well, yeah, but you know what I mean, uh, meaning he didn't pull it out his ass. It's, well, it's no, a, I, yeah. no, absolutely not. Yeah, it's a but gathering he of had data. access to information that most people didn't or sure. didn't know where to look. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but, uh, you know, and of course, what this does is this prompts us to have to do a 9-11 uh, show. And we haven't done one yet. And uh, for a couple of reasons, I guess. Uh, one, it'll most certainly get one of those community strikes from uh, from the YouTube overlords, without question, I'm sure. Or at least some kind of some kind of a, a effect will play on us. Uh, for you just one, have to be very careful about any clips. If you don't yeah. do clips... It's going to be harder for anyone to do that strike. But if you play CNN or anything, and that's a bummer because there are some damning oh, yeah. clips. 
there's a there's an interview with five Mossad agents on a TV show in Israel yeah. where they outright say they were in the they were in New York to document the event. Mm-hmm. That's right. And of course, we know that uh, Building 7 is always a big point of contention. Mm-hmm. Uh, the firemen come in after and talk about the uh, uh, the ther- thermite uh, uh, just flowing in the basements and uh, you know all those kind of things. There's a lot of information. Uh, and uh, anyone who thinks there weren't some kind of shenanigans going on there, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Because uh, clearly there was something going on. Now, I don't know exactly what's what. Uh, but I do know that, that that was not a straight up just terrorist bombing. Uh, and of course, uh, Mr. Cooper, not only that, but after it happened, he somehow got a, the ability to, he broke into a a, 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 ca- a a radio cast that was going on. And he came in and says, how did they know who they were? Fair point. How did they know who they were? And of course, uh, you take it to another uh, 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 effect that we know that a bunch of those so-called terrorists that died in those planes are still alive. They're still and alive. And are heroes, and were given medals in their various countries, by the way. And a lot of them came out and said, uh, "Hey, wait a minute! No, I'm not dead. I'm alive. It wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't involved." <laughs> Right, right. Uh, but there's a lot of shenanigans behind that. And, and it's funny, too, like uh, we, we talked about Alex Jones, because Alex Jones uh, clearly came up out of what uh, uh, Mr. Cooper and others were doing. Clearly he did. Uh, now, he was more of a uh, – Alex is more of a theater guy than uh, Cooper was, for sure. Uh, but Alex was always putting forward uh, actual information. He just kind of would jump up and run down like a gorilla while doing it. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, a lot of people talk about turning the gays frog. They've turned uh, the, the frogs gay. Sorry. Uh, uh, they turn it into a meme. <laughs> yeah. I, I like, I like, I like that better. Uh, but, uh, uh, they made a meme out of him for that, but he wasn't lying. It did happen. Right. And the whole Sandy hook thing that they really got mad at him about, well, why did you get so mad? Because if you go look at the Sandy hook stuff, man, there's absolute shenanigans going on there. Now, I don't know exactly what happened there, but I'm telling you this, those fathers and the mothers that they put up in front of you that were supposedly mothers and fathers were not. They were hired actors for sure, right? Oh, that Robbie that Robbie Peters guy, what is his name, Robbie? Well, yeah. The one that lost the little girl. He's obviously, he's laughing before he goes yeah, live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of shenanigans going on with that. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know what happened because I don't know. But obviously something weird was going on there, and what was the point? Uh, but then again, we see that these uh, modern news agencies, they don't care what the truth is. Uh, what was it? CBS got in trouble the uh, just a few weeks ago uh, because they made all the doctors and nurses bring their cars from the parking lot and put them in front of the hospital so they could get a shot of people waiting in line to get their test for the, the, the corona, right? I mean, they do this kind of crap all the time. So was the Sandy Hook uh, thing simply that? Was it them just uh, 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 sensationalizing a a very tragic situation? Or was there something darker and more perverted involved? Many people have come out and said that that was not an operating school, that it had been water damaged in the flood. It had water uh, stains up to a certain height on the walls, and it was being used as a storage facility for records. But I'm saying that it's clearly something going on, which makes it newsworthy, right? And, yep. and therefore, uh, but that is one of the things that they, they hang over his head uh, constantly. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? But wh- why he should dare? He's a reporter. Uh, and uh, like I said, I don't want to really, you know, intertwine Alex Jones and uh, 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 Mr. Cooper uh, uh, because they're not the same people. Uh, but, uh, uh, but the reason why I'm mentioning Alex is because Alex is so – if you go listen to Mr. Cooper's radio stuff or some of his uh, lectures he's done publicly, which you can find. I found them. Um, uh, it's clear that Alex is parodying him. It's clear well, that I also Alex think took a Alex... lot out of him. Yeah. yeah, I think Alex was compromised though, and he's he became controlled opposition. Maybe, and uh, Mr. And Cooper thought that too. Because now you see the proliferation of all the products he sells. He does he does ten minutes of show an hour and fifty minutes of commercials. Oh no, I don't no. know if you've seen Alex lately, but it's a it's a farce now. Oh well, well, of course he's just trying to survive. Uh, but uh, Mr. Cooper thought he was an agent as well. I mean, yeah, I I think opinion. it's I think it's. Uh, he would be off the air, I think. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, but I just think it's really tragic. It would have been nice if he didn't die uh, because, uh, you know, he would be wonderful on YouTube. It would be great. I'd enjoy it the hell out of it. Uh, but I like his radio stuff, too. Uh, but um, but anyway, uh, like I said, I do have wrap-up stuff, but I do want to get into uh, other things before we get to his death. Uh, Thundero or Slick, do you guys have anything you want to add or, or model, of course? Uh, we pretty much already covered what I was going to talk about. Just mostly, just the nine eleven stuff. Um, <clears throat> he, his prediction was just that something big was coming. Um, the fact it's quite interesting that he was killed on November fifth, yeah. um, which is a very mystical day for some reason. I don't know what that reason is, but it seems to have a lot of historical significance repeatedly. Um, and it's just. <sighs> This gentleman, and we'll, we'll get into that soon, I'm sure, he was definitely a troublemaker for people with way too much power. Mm. Um, you don't end up in the fate that he ended up in exactly as he predicted he would end up because he knew how they operate without hitting the wrong nerve. Now, I don't know what nerve it was, and there was probably many, but they had been after him for years, and suddenly he had to go. Um, I think it was the 9-11. I think 9-11 was, we're definitely going to have to do a show on it. You're right. We've been kind of saving it. Um, was a pivotal moment in the history of humankind. Uh, I think it set us on the path. If You could say it started sooner, but this was definitely the final final ceiling moment. It was a turning point, no question, on the yeah. path we're on now. So I think humanity is going to have a choice. Uh, unfortunately, the vast majority of humanity seems to be choosing uh, slavery instead of freedom, which is a shame, but that's how humans are. A lot of them are weak. Um, but anyway, I think Mr. Cooper was not. I think he was genuine. I think he was real. Um, I think if, if you go out and you, you can find all of his stuff on YouTube, or at least a lot of it, if not, you can find it on the internet. I'm sure somebody has an archive of his entire... Uh, show yeah. and everything ever done. It. Yeah, yeah, it exists. I know, I know it exists. I just don't remember where it is. Um, I, I'm going to put a video to anybody who's in the Discord. I'm going to put a video. Uh, it's 26 minutes long, and it's his predictions. Pretty much all of the predictions that he had made on 9/11, and he even has something on the the Jews in there. And he refutes somebody who tries to play the blame the Jews for everything game quite clever, quite correctly. And quite accurately, and he makes the same argument I've made from day one when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I, I, I recommend people watch it. I'll put it in there a little bit in a little bit here. Um, he was show. also very outspoken about HIV AIDS being a, yes. a bioengineered disease to yep. target minorities and homosexuals. That's true. Yes. And there's been a lot of rumor about that, even continuing to this day. Um, what day did he die? What was that day you were asking about significance? Maybe I can help. What day was it? I believe he died on November 5th. November, right? 5th. November 5th. Let's see, November yeah. 5th. What uh, is by that? the way, Guy I have Fox nothing to add day. to this. Oh, hold on. Let's I have that. nothing to add to this. Okay. I, I, I'm out of my depth. <laughs> oh, okay, that's all right. Um, November fifth, uh, Guy, uh, Guy Fox Day is November fifth, of course. Uh, of course, he was re uh, a rebel. Remember, 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 remember. remember uh, the fifth mm. of November. Uh, but uh, let's see what else. Uh, well, it's also the um, uh, at least with the Gregorian calendar, uh, it's the fifty-six days before the uh, uh, the new year, and of course, fifty-six uh, astrologically is important uh, as far as annual countdown that used to happen in November, um, in obviously January, uh, but under the Gregorian uh, one, the fifty-six days from November fifth. So maybe that's why. I don't know. That's the only thing that know. are popping in my head, though. Uh, those I two don't things. know why because it's not. It's not like the other. Um, ones that seem to be, you know, significant and come up often, uh, like 420. It, it's not near a solstice. It's not near an hour, uh, you know, a shift in the axis or anything like the, the magnetic shifts that happen. None of that. So I don't, it's right in the middle of, well, it's not right in the middle, but it's close to the middle of two of them. So it's, maybe that's why. Maybe it's, that's why they consider it a turning point. But it is interesting that it, it does seem to happen. If strange things seem to happen on that. He was, he was, let's just say it, he was executed on that day um and obviously guy fox uh the fifth of november happened then yeah. there's probably others that i'm not remembering uh but it's it's just crazy that these kind of things that history rhymes so much um and then people dismiss it as just coincidence i don't think it is i think there's something much deeper going on i think nat king cole died on the fifth of november could be 
Not sure. Well, I, and I think you're correct when you say that 9-11 is, is what did him in. That's the thing that they made yeah. the decision because the other things that, you know, he didn't get a lot of headway with, um, with Oklahoma city. He didn't get a lot of headway with the HIV AIDS. Um, the other, you know, the, the secret, uh, projects the uh mystery schools you know the mystery like schools the things like you know the the secret society is bilderbergs and stuff he was all into all that trilateral commission skull and bones he that none of that stuff ever really took off but i i think that there was a lot of worry after 9 11 because it was audacious yeah well, they did well let's talk about his death a little bit then um, uh, because, you know, uh, I went, I didn't know who he was. I went and I researched him and, uh, I, I watched, uh, even listened to, uh, radio dispatches from the event. I saw articles, I saw news reports, uh, about his, uh, that when he died and, uh, the thing about it, that's a bit shocking. Well, I guess we shouldn't be shocked by now, but, uh, there was a bit shocking about it was they didn't even try to hide that it was a set up assassination. They didn't even bother. Uh, and therefore that means it was a warning. Right. Because yeah. they didn't hide it. Uh, they went out there. They set him up. They had a, a couple of cops in an unmarked uh, uh, car sitting in front of his house with a radio blast. And they were cackling and making a bunch of noise, trying to draw him out of his house, which he did. And when he came out, they got him. And they, they admitted they did that. They did it intentionally. And they said the reason they were doing it is because they were dealing with this noisy militia man. And that's how yeah. they were presenting him in those news reports. It didn't come out to later that he's actually a public figure because he was. Right. Well, the IRS made a claim against him for tax evasion, mm -hmm. and so that gave them the pretense. But it was it was the sheriff's department in uh, Arizona, it in was. the county in Arizona where he lived. And but now he did he did shoot one of them in the head. One of the yeah. Well, after they tried to run him over with a car, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, but but if you shoot at a cop, the cops are going to come and kill you. Oh, yeah, no, no, I understand that. But, I mean, it, it all happened at, at once, and, uh, you know, and they were there to kill him. He knew it, and he defended himself, and at least he got a shot off. That's all I have to say about it. The, um, the, the excuse they gave for why they were there, you know, under the law is that they had a warrant for um, assault with a deadly weapon and, uh, what was the other one, endangerment. I guess a few months before, or a month or so before, there was people who he didn't know Outside of, they weren't technically on his property, but he went and scared them off while he, he had a gun. Yeah, but he, he didn't want them to. He brandished yeah. a weapon. He brandished a weapon, which, okay, fine. Um, I personally am against any law that says you're not allowed to do exactly what he did. You should be allowed to scare people away from your property with a firearm. Sure. That's kind of a point. Yeah. Um, but anyway. It's legal to do that. It is legal. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what I'm saying is that that's obvious nonsense. No sheriff, or at least no good sheriff, is going to enforce that. They're just going to go, no, I'm not. That, that's ridiculous. He didn't. Nobody's hurt. It's fine. You're being ridiculous. Well, Some sheriffs will enforce nonsense, but good sheriffs won't. So this sheriff was clearly somebody who will just do what he's told. Yeah, but it's, it's not even just that, Thundero, because they were giving out information that cops will never give out. The yeah. fact that they were there, that they set him up, they intentionally, they were open about all of it. Cops never admit that shit, dude. Never. No. But they did yeah, in this case. That was, that was a greater message to other groups it and was. other people it that was. we will kill you. And there I, there was another, a father and son, um, and boy, I'm drawing a blank on it, and I hate that I am. I can look for it. But there was, uh, in the early 2010s, there was another father and son that were also much into this stuff. That they were also cornered in a parking lot and shot to death by police. So I mean, they if if you are are effective, uh, there's a very good chance you will be killed. And yeah. you know, I think people really need to look at 9/11 for what it was. It was an unprecedented event in this country. But if you look at what happened after that. Like, for instance, now, if you wonder why police are arresting people for being in a park without a mask, look at 9-11. Yep. Because that is, if, if you were old enough at that time to experience it, you are old enough to have, have lived in two very different Americas. Yeah, that's true.
Well, you know, and he mentions, he talked about this in depth in his Mystery 12 series that I watched. Uh, and, you know, one of the things he had, he had, he was talking about in that, and understand this is way before 9-11 happened, right? This is in the early 90s he was doing this, or mid-90s he was doing that series. Uh, but um, one of the things he mentioned in that was the fact that, uh, you know, eventually they're going to they're gonna do some big event in America, and afterward they're going to put in a bunch of laws that take all your rights away. And he, he was talking about that, and it was very clear that this, this is already planned. He'd seen it written down in the frickin' 70s, right? Uh, and a lot of the things he was taking back to his time in the Navy in the 60s and 70s and the stuff he had seen and how they were coming to fruition. And, of course, he's 100% right. We got this certain thing called the Patriot Act. Yep. And that was completely unconstitutional what they did with that, and with their, what some of these governors are doing right now with the with the corona uh, it is completely unconstitutional as well, uh, and yep. it's just feeding and building upon it. So it's it's a really interesting guy to go take a listen to because he's very accurate. Yes, corona really seems to be, in the scheme of things, it seems to be an a live exercise. It's a test. It's a it's a litmus test. Well, how do you think See it's what going? They can get it. Well, I think it's going pretty well. They're going, well, people are going to just pretty much uh, take that boot on their neck. I don't know. That people are well, pushing back hard, dude. Well. I, I want them to think that. I want them to keep pushing. Um, I, I think if this goes on much they longer, need to. Yeah, you're going to see a lot more open resistance. If people like billionaires like Elon Musk, who he's probably inside, at least to some degree, as you would say, with the space stuff probably is. Even he is openly defying the government and just today tweeted things out like take the red pill and making Matrix references and using Matrix memes and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think you- that – I think – I genuinely think – now, I don't think he's like on our side, but I think he's pro something happening. Um, he and I he- genuinely do think that we're on the precipice here. If, if, if humanity as a whole – I'm not talking about race, even country. If people, free people – People who want to be free and sovereign people don't stand up now. The next 10 years are going to be the worst in human history. It's going to well, be. Well, you know my opinion. We have to bug. Yeah, there, yeah, there's no other option. Yeah. We have well, to. Well, I think Elon needs to be uh, careful because he might end up under a monorail. He might. <laughs> Could he happen. Might end up, he might end up taking to the uh, cone of a rocket. Yes, right, if he starts right, giving yeah. up the secrets, they'll, they'll, they'll try and destroy him every which way they can first, and if that doesn't work, they'll just destroy him, period. Yeah. Now, Slick, you said you're way out of your depth here, and uh, thank you for you know saying I'm here, but I'm not here. Uh, but uh, you must have some opinion on the general topic, though, Slick. Well, um, you guys are not going to like this. Okay. Um, I think in longer terms than just hundred thousand years, I think we're eternal beings, and all this stuff is just bullshit. Oh, okay. Focus on yourself and who you are. And what <laughs> Scientology you, and for be. the win. All right, cool. No, 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 no. Beyond Scientology. Oh, there's this a beyond. Is, I, I'm just uh, okay. We got to get Scientology. Scient- Scientology. Scientology is made up bullshit. I'm it talking is. about what you can glean from your life and what you can see in the universe. And all this other stuff, you know, you only have a fraction of a, a blip of a second in, you know, galactic terms, let alone eternity. Yeah. To really um, make any, yeah. anything go on in your life. And so when you're worried all about all this stuff, I'm just like, all I can do is cover my own backyard. And yeah, I'll pick up a weapon to p- defend my country. And, and I may die doing it. Sure. Um, however... What's more important is uh, what you are integrally, what you are spiritually in, in the soul. You may not believe in that, and that's fine. But I do. And well, I believe in I you, mean, and es- I believe in everybody else out there. So there you go. That's my, that's my take. Well, esoterically, you're probably right. But, um, uh, you know, when the gorilla's at your door, you need to make a decision, right? Because you live Well, that's in the why present, I have lots of arm months. Oh, there you go. There and, you that's, go. and that's why I belong to a church that is very cohesive in a and well kind of armed. regimented way. <laughs> and well armed, well well um, well uh, stocked. Yeah. Um, that's why I I believe in my religion, although yeah. I think they practice some funny things. Well, no, I mean that's one thing people don't really talk about with the Mormons very much. They are well armed and well organized. Oh yeah, it's true. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, unless they want to drop a nu- some nuclear weapons on us, it would be a very foolhardy thing to come into Utah. We have a lot of choke points, and we know how to use them. Oh, and they have used them before. Uh, and uh, you know what I think it is with the Mormons, uh, uh, Slick, is uh, magic underwear. It throws people off. It is. Our magic underwear. Yeah. It's bulletproof. It is bulletproof. In our brand. Yes. <laughs> Enough rant. Okay. Uh, but, uh, all right, cool. Uh, uh, I want to go over, we still have uh, things we could talk about here. We got time left, but, uh, I want to introduce a couple things if I may. Uh, and, uh, that you guys go ahead and, uh, look on what I shared finally. Cause I can't, I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that guys. Uh, but, uh, but, let me by the way, I want to add one little caveat. Uh-huh. The Mormons have this thing called from, um, what they call, um, the Gadiate and robbers or people who practice seeker combinations. We do believe in that. So, I mean, it's not like we are ignorant of such things. Okay, cool. 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 Uh, now uh, I am sharing this. So you guys can take a look at this now, but uh, I'm, I'm sharing it with you guys because uh, there's a couple little things I want to uh, uh, go over here. Uh, and uh, if you go and search uh, Milton William Cooper, uh, you will find a whole bunch of pages and stuff. But I found this one here from Rolling Stone and uh, it's a very interesting one uh, because this is from Mark Jacobson uh, from Rolling Stone. And uh, does it give me a timestamp on when this was written? Yes. August 22nd, 2018. So not too long ago. Uh, but it's titled here, The Granddaddy of American Conspiracy Theories, Decades Before QAnon, QAnon False Flags, Crisis Actors, which are hilarious, and Alex Jones. There was Milton William Cooper, an exclusive expert from Pale Horse Rider uh, by Mark Jacobson. Uh, and uh, there's a couple questions I want to ask these guys before I get, but, 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 you know, well, let me get to this first. Uh, this article is lovingly written. Let me just put it that way. Uh, it really goes in, and there's a lot of respect for the man from this uh, Mr. Jacobson here in this Rolling Stone article, which is something you wouldn't expect, but yet here it is. Uh, what is the date on that article? It, it's, uh, uh, I think I read it. It's August 22nd, 2018. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Uh, but it's very... I was actually going to mention this real quick. I was actually going to mention this. For some reason, right around that time, like three months span, there was a ton of articles about him. He was a super hot topic for the mainstream media. Some den- most denouncing him and calling him a wacko and a kook sure. and da 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 da. But there was a few that seemed to be f- at least even-handed. This um, one is lovingly written. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I, did some like a book or something about him come out? I have no idea. But for some reason, right around that time in the middle of 2018, he was a hot topic. Yeah. Um, and the reason I mentioned this one particularly, uh, I didn't know that, uh, but uh, uh, is because I suggest you go read this. Uh, this is going to give you a very good primer on the man. It's going to give you an understanding of who he is, what he was thinking, and what he was doing in a very quick and concise way. Uh, so it's a very long article, uh, but uh, it's very interesting. And I wanted to come down here to the last words of the article because I thought they were interesting. Uh, but I su- see how long it is. But I suggest you read it. If you want to understand who Mr. Cooper was, this is uh this is what you want to read right here, uh and where was it here uh uh so yeah uh and around midnight on November fifth two thousand one less than two months after the nine eleven attacks that's exactly what, oh sorry uh they're going to kill me ladies and gentlemen he told the audience they're going to come up here in the middle of the night and shoot me dead right on my dare doorstep and around midnight on November fifth two thousand one less than two months after nine eleven attacks. That's exactly what happened. Um, this is a good article. Go read it. Uh, it's uh, if you want to understand who this di- the dude is. Uh, I don't know why uh, this was allowed <laughs> uh, because this is the Rolling Stone, and we know they're a freaking mouthpiece. We know that, right? Um, he also had a good book called "Behold the Pale Horse," which is I haven't read, but I think I probably will. Uh, but uh, I don't know why do you guys think this was allowed to even exist? That's a good question. Um, occasionally, things like this will happen, and I think a lot of it is just deniability, so that they can say, "See, no, we were talked about it. We did this." And like you'll see that the media, the mainstream media, does this all the time with con- what they consider controversial news topics that they don't want to talk about because they make you know leftists look bad. Uh, they'll they'll cover it for you know do something on it, and then that's it, right? They never talk really talk about it again. I have a feeling this is probably in a similar vein, or maybe Mr. Jacobson just. Uh, appreciates Mr. Cooper, Maybe. and don't let him do it because it, I mean he's not that well known. Uh, people on the internet, 
and he's long dead. Yeah. So he, what more influence can he really have? It's not like he has some great memoirs out there that are going to change the world. He just he just doesn't. He was a great speaker. He was an okay. He had some things he wrote that were okay, but for the most part, I don't think he's going to rattle the rattle the cages anymore. The cages he rattled rattled back and took him out. Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, but um, yeah, no, it's a good article. Uh, go read it. Uh, and uh, like I said, I think I will read a pale horse. Uh, uh, behold a pale, pale horse, uh, just because I'm very interested. I'm certainly going to watch the rest of his series, or excuse me, listen to the rest of his series. Uh, and I have plenty of time to do that while I'm working. So, uh, but a couple of things uh, I wanted to get into. Uh, uh, one is this right here, and if you guys will indulge me, please. Uh, when I was listening, uh, I spent many hours this week just uh, listening to um, uh, Mr. Cooper speak and all his ideas and stuff. And when um, uh, and something popped into my head, uh, and uh, I was like, you know, oh, he would love this. And uh, it's um, uh, actually it was many years ago. I was working as long before I did this YouTube thing. Uh, I was working on a, a, a Vesica uh, a Piscus uh, uh, thing academically. I wasn't not conspiracy theory, actual academic stuff. And I was just doing some research on the internet, and I came across a web page, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and uh, it had nothing to do with what I was doing. Uh, it was conspiracy theory and stuff like that, but I thought it was fascinating. Uh, and I'm going to show you that page because the guy who does it is a pretty interesting fella. Uh, but um, uh, when I when I was re listening to Mr. Cooper, it just came into my head, and I was like, oh yeah. So I want to kind of give an homage to him because I think this is something he would have found very cool. Uh, and it took me forever to find this thing. By the way. Because it was just this vague thing in the back of my memory, and I went digging for it, and it took me, but I find it. I found it. I found it. So, uh, I, this is a commercial. It's an hour long. Uh, excuse me, a minute long. Uh, and it's, uh, it's from Versace for their perfume. Now, Versace does a bunch of weird stuff. We know they do. Uh, but uh, this one is very interesting. I'm just going to play it once, and then we're going to go dissect it a little bit, if you guys don't mind. Uh, kind of an homage to Mr. Cooper and how he might do something. You, you guys okay with that? Sure. Yep. Cool. All right. Here we go. All right. Let me uh, unmute this and uh, let's go. Just watch. Now, um, Mr. Cooper talks a lot about how they uh, hide information right in front of you. They communicate to themselves. That's why I kind of started with the uh, with uh, introducing Thundero with a uh, a 2001 Space Odyssey uh, joke. I, I guess it wasn't very funny, uh, but uh, I did it intentionally because this is something Mr. Cooper. I think he would have loved to have lived to have seen this, and he would have certainly talked about this uh, this commercial. Now, uh, just offhand, what did you guys just see? A woman turned into crystal. Okay. Uh, model? Um, I think there's a, a couple of interpretations. Um, the crystal's growing out of the ground, first of all. Uh, I kind of... Uh, it's kind of hard to tell what exactly was going on in the very beginning there. Mm -hmm. um, I'll play it again. Okay. Um... Uh, well, well, I'll tell you what this is, and we'll, we'll go through and we'll dissect it. Uh, this is a one-minute telling of Eve meeting the serpent, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this is taking the angle, which is a mystery school angle, by the way, uh, that uh, Eve had uh, sex with the serpent. 
you know, meaning the wise man. Because understand, serpent doesn't really mean snake. It means wise man. Uh, and of course, it's uh, Lucifer or his agent, uh, 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 Satan. Uh, and the, it's the Garden story, the uh, Garden of Eden story. And uh, the uh, mystery school's take on it is, uh, with the mysticism and the, and the symbolism of it, is that uh, she had sex with Satan and later went and told Adam about it and had sex with him. And therefore, the twins... Abel, born of Adam, and Cain, born of Satan, were born. Right? This is a mystery school idea. And this this commercial from Versace is very much mystery school uh, oriented. Uh, well, you'll have to you'll have to explain that interpretation because that's that's I will. not what I. I oh saw no, there's only one interpretation. And I'll, I'll demonstrate it to you very clearly. Um, but um, uh, now, like I said earlier, a lot of these elites are part of these mystery schools, whatever they call themselves. You get uh, uh, Masons and you get the Malta soldiers and yeah, yeah, et cetera. There's tons of them. Right. Uh, and a lot of people still like to use the word Illuminati to put them all together. Uh, and that's fine. You, can, you There's no, no, no problem with that, I guess. Uh, but um, uh, and like I said, it doesn't matter whether you believe any of the mysticism or not. They do. Or at least they, as being part of those organizations, they must, right? So uh, Versace is always doing weird commercials, but this one is very telling. Uh, and uh, let me go through it again, and I'll demonstrate exactly what's going on here. All right? So first of all, something has landed. It arrives. What is it? It's a female. She's on the ground. She's touching the earth. Now look at the earth here. What is What does this earth look like? Scales. Scales. Snake That's skin. Right. Snake skin. She's meeting the serpent. Okay. She's curious. She's interesting. She's becoming erotic in her uh, emotions. Right. Then coming up from uh, underneath, something is coming to meet her. And of course, as we see these crystals arrive, there's no way you cannot see that as a penis. It's impossible. Right. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not with you. It's clearly a penis. Uh, and then you see here, you see the stars uh, in the sky. You see the birth of something new. Uh, you see her, the breath, the spirit is starting to emit from her. She's being transformed and changed into a higher being, an enlightened being. She lets her spirit out. Watch her right eye, please. You see it becomes that of a serpent. Right, and you may. You, there was also a thing in there where you saw a man entering a portal. Let me see if I can catch that. Uh, where was that? That was right about here. Right. Let me see. Right in here. I don't know if I can catch it, but right, at, right, right there. You have to break it down and look frame for frame. But there is a guy, uh, a male, who's entering and going through a portal. He's coming out, meaning Satan is coming into the world. Okay. And then, uh, of course, here at the end, you see her breath, her spirit, her uh, snake eye. And then right there, you, if you just caught it, she's trapped within the, the Versace thing. And she's looking up toward the heavens. And, of course, there is a Vesca Piscus sitting right in front of you. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a, a commercial put together by Versace that is clearly retelling the mystery school version of Adam and Eve. Uh, and uh, it, it's just very interesting. Uh, now, there's a guy here uh, who does much better than what I just did, uh, but uh, right here. No, is that it? Yeah. Uh, the Light in the Dark Place. Now, this guy does a lot of interesting uh, historical conspiracy theory stuff. Like I said, it was years ago that I had seen this, and it just stuck in my head, and I had to go dig for it, but I found him. Uh, and he's got a ton of uh, uh, stories and things that you might find interesting. Uh, whether you believe it or not doesn't matter. It's entertaining. Uh, and this one, he goes into very deep t detail about the whole idea as he shows the commercial here and you know he has other things he talks about and he's kind of going on about the Vesca Piscus uh, but it's a very interesting little uh, uh, this one article he did and he's got a whole bunch of them uh, but uh, definitely check it out the light in the dark place it's fun if you like conspiracy theories and the conspiracy conspiratorial minded people uh, check this guy out he's fun it's 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 very interesting and like I said it doesn't matter if you believe it or not it, it's just it's it's just fun uh, but uh, let's go back to the video here because I can hear model questioning. Yeah, I, I am. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just don't see. I don't see this as subversive. What what is there? What is the point of this? Now we know that with these groups that they 
they almost have like a they have a code between them where they like to telegraph right uh, and they like to put the stuff out plainly it's almost like a game mm -hmm. or that they feel it's fair as long as they put out what they're doing I but see. what what is your take on this as far as what is it accomplishing what is it well I, I, like a lot of things they do, it's, it? it's not really accomplishing anything. It's just an acknowledgement to those who are enlightened, those uh, those lumined people, uh, as Mr. Cooper would say, uh, that are uh, aware of what they're actually seeing. And, and, of course, I didn't really get into it really well last week or the week before where I was talking about the Vesica Piscus because I didn't have time. Uh, but understand that uh, I, I said very plainly that it represents the vagina, right? The Marie, uh, the pure virgin, right? You know, Mary. Um, and, um, uh, and that is true, but it's actually much deeper than that. Uh, and the Vesca Piscus shows you a little bit of the ancient knowledge that the, that the ancients had. Uh, they're far smarter than we give them credit for. Uh, they even understood exactly how, uh, the sperm getting into the egg, creating its chromosomal packet, and then interacting with the, fe the females or the eggs packet of chromosomes, and how they come together as two cells. They meet, merge, and then, of course, the zygote comes out of that. And that is the ultimate meaning of the Vesca Piscus. It is the creation of life. And, of course, there's, one, there's a Piscus sitting right in front of you, right? The eye of Horus is looking upon you as we speak, dude. Um, and well, the uh, most interesting thing I see in the commercial is the the vision of her shooting down to the ground. That is that's interesting. Uh, the rest of it, I I see as a bottle of perfume that looks like it's crystal and a and a commercial. That's the, can you can you show the snake eye? Because I didn't see the snake eye. Oh sure. You know, let me show it to you. Well, I mean, uh, uh, Thundara caught the snakes, the scales uh, here on the ground, right? Uh, and that's, of course, what she's looking at. Well, she's uh, in she, a desert. She's right? in a desert. There's scales on the ground. She's being, uh, she's being, um, as if she's orgasmic in her face and her action, her sound, right? Uh, we have uh, penises coming up from the ground. Uh, these are clearly penises. Let me play it again for you. Uh, yeah, that's a penis, dude. Yeah, uh, but they're uh, clearly penises. Clearly penises. Clearly, the way they're growing too. How could that be anything but a a peni, sir? Uh, but uh, but it, anyway, this is just commercial. Peni. Yeah. Uh, but then of course the stars. You got a weird looking penis, here. I guess. I suppose. <laughs> uh, but uh, just in crystal form, uh, and of course I wish I could catch it. I just don't have the breakdown to be able to do it right here. Uh, but right in here, there's at the the other guy slowed it down. You can see it. Uh, the uh, uh, there's a man here. Uh, that comes out and he walks through a portal. It's just so subtle you can't catch it. I'm trying to see if I can catch it. There's this face. Oh, here he is. It's just starting. Uh, let's see if I can uh, just edge forward ever so slightly. No, I can't. Oh, well. Uh, but uh, if you go watch, uh, look at that guy. He breaks it down frame for frame. And you can see there's actually a man walking through a, a light portal there. Uh, but uh, her eye. Let me get over her eye for you. Okay. So you see her eye is uh, going black here. And then it'll become serpentine. Here we go. It goes black. And then the serpent eye. Did you catch it? No, it, it, right it's there. shadow. There it to is. Me. No, it's serpent. It's time. shadow it's to me. Right serpent. Uh, and like I said, if you go look at the other guy who broke it down much better than I'm doing here, uh, he zooms in and he shows you it's very clearly a reptile's eye. Um, but um, like I said, is there any subversion to here? No, I think it's just kind of one of the things we see from them all the time, nodding to each other, right? Because they seem well, to do that a lot. A, one thing that uh, Cooper used to talk about, and uh, if people don't know who Edward Bernays is, and they want to, you know, get into something interesting, go look up Eddie Bernays and and find out uh, about how the how the propaganda is used. Especially, we've talked about this before. Television is the most ingenious delivery vehicle for propaganda and programming that will ever be made. I don't think they can top it unless they can directly beam stuff into your brain. Um, with a radio, on it, I'm sure. Yeah, and I'm, uh, they are for sure. Yeah. But um, now, now the Eddie Bernays stuff is is subversive. It is overt. It is meant to change to change minds. You talk about the Jesus influence. one and the Horror of Babylon thing. 
No, oh. no, no. Okay. No, not uh, not a you know it's not religious based. Okay. It's it's absolutely prop. It's propaganda. Uh, What's his Goebbels name? was a huge fan. Edward Bernays. He was Freud's uh, nephew. Oh, interesting. Edward Bernays. Uh, but the Thunder, you see what I'm showing, right? Yeah. No, I think I think you're uh, the phallic symbol of the crystal. I saw that the first time too. I just they they it's all over the place uh, constantly. We're we're literally inundated with penises all the time, and people don't even realize that's what you're that's what they're doing. Whenever you see something do exactly that and take that shape, like an obelisk is a is a phallus. It's supposed to, it's a representation of a penis. Um, that's what you're looking at. That's what they're trying to convey. When these these directors and things, when you look at something just as simple as a commercial, nothing is by accident. And if it is by accident, it's usually funny because it's so ridiculous by accident, right? For sure. Well, it's scripted, right? It's commercial. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, I just I don't know the purpose of the commercial th uh, uh, um, uh, model, uh, but it's clear. I mean, we have the arrival of the woman from nothing. Right. Then we have the serpentine skin on the ground. Clearly, uh, we have the the phallic symbols or her acting like she's in the throes of, you know, ecstasy. Uh, we have the stars coming upon us, the birth of a new child, the child walking through the door. Uh, we have uh, her letting out the spirit, her spirit, uh, her being captured, uh, meaning humanity being captured. Uh, and uh, we have her being taken over by the serpent with her eye changing into a serpentine eye. You see in the end, she's captured in the perfume bottle. She's captured in it and she's locked over with a Vesica Piscus, right? Um, it, it, you know, I don't know their reasoning for it, but it's clearly a, a, a the reason why I say it's a, a mystery school version of the garden is because, you know, most people think of it as the apple as being knowledge, right? The giving of knowledge. Uh, and this is uh, portraying more of the, the, the sex is used to manipulate human beings and is the greatest tool they have, uh, which is a mystery school thought, right? Uh, which is why I'm off the reservation with that one on you, definitely. All right, yeah. cool. Well, uh, I see it very clearly, uh, and uh, but that's good though. Uh, but like I said, uh, uh, I checked out this guy. But uh, go over this person right here. Uh, I don't know his name offhand, uh, but the light in the dark place. Uh, it was hard to find, but if you go to light in the dark place uh, dot wordpress dot com, it's all one word: the light in the dark place dot wordpress dot com. Uh, this guy's got a lot of stuff. That's kind of interesting. And this whole article, he goes into great depth. He breaks the video down. And he, he uses other things, too. He even talks about the Vesca Piscus here, uh, where, of course, you see right in that picture. Perfect. Uh, the chromosomes coming together. And, of course, the fact that they create a Vesca Piscus when they create, uh, which is interesting that the ancients understood what that looked like. Because, you know, don't you need special tools to see that stuff? I don't know. Uh, but um, there's a lot of information the ancients had that is... Uh, it's questionable. And he's got a whole bunch of stuff here. And this is just this one article. Uh, this guy's got a lot of articles on the kind of things we like to chat about. Uh, and I think he, he takes it seriously. He has fairly good production value. I don't know. It's fun. Uh, so check it out. Anyway, those are. The, I just thought that would be a nice homage to Mr. Cooper. It was the only reason I showed it. I just because when I was listening to his stuff, it popped into my head that yeah, I remember seeing that years ago. And I think he probably got a kick out of it. He would have. Uh, he probably might have done a show talking about it. We well, you know what we're going to have to do now, Chester. What? We're going to have to do a TFT on Edward Bernays. We could. I'll write him down. Now, why do you think he's uh, TFT worthy, though? Uh, you would understand very quickly if you started to research it. Well, I'd have to because I he, don't is, know he is. Uh, he is the reason why. Uh, he is the direct reason why smoking with women became fashionable. He did the all the advertising for cigarettes to get women to start smoking. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Let me see. Oh, here's my list. Okay, so I'm going to put on. Uh, I'll put him on here, and I'll do some research. Uh, but Edward Bernays, I don't even know who he is. Joseph Goebbels was a huge fan of Edward Bernays, and his main inspiration for how he handled propaganda. Oh, and uh, Goebbels was very good at it. Um, and I actually, uh, I, didn't, I didn't watch much of it, but uh, Mr. Cooper does a whole thing on the Nazis. 
and Gerbil in particular. Uh, so, uh, and the, I have want to watch more of that too, but he, uh, uh, because it, it seems that he understands that a lot of the, uh, the modern American movement with the mystery schools came up out of Germany, mm-hmm. um, and came in with that after flux with pa- project paperclip and stuff like that. Uh, but I wrote it down. Uh, so let's see here now, uh, anything else? Uh, that was just, I just thought it would be fun to do a little homage i just i just it just struck me when i was listening to him uh, uh model it just uh, that popped in my head and was like oh, i bet you he would have uh, liked that uh, that story that article that's all uh and it's you know the thing is guys it's kind of sad it's like sad because uh he wasn't there's no need to really kill him. I don't think he was important enough or strong enough to be taken out. And he clearly was taken out. Like I said, they didn't even try to hide the fact they didn't because cops usually will kind of round things up and you don't get all the truth unless it goes to court for a long time. Uh, but they, they were, they were happy to just put it right out there right from the beginning. So they, they took him out and they wanted you to know they took him out. But um, I don't know. It's just sad because I think I would have loved to have seen him, to putting uh, production value videos together because he would have done well at it. I think. Oh, he would be huge right now. Yeah. And uh, that's and I do think nine eleven is the reason. Probably. I think that was that they thought we 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 can't have this start to go. And because you know internet broadcasting was really taking off like around two thousand three. You really it really started two thousand three two thousand. You know, yeah. in in there. Yeah, you know, I've only been doing it for about a decade myself. Uh, but um, my wife is the one who got me into YouTube because <laughs> she was always watching these little videos and these little things. And I was like, what the hell are you watch? She said, YouTube. I was like, eh, I didn't want to be bothered with it because I'm so busy. Uh, but uh, she was watching, um, uh, who's that, uh, uh, who's that uh, uh, big old fat uh, black dude that does um, St. Elsewhere? Well, what's his name? Um, he's pretty pretty fun uh, uh singer actually what's his name damn it he was on uh, uh the voice or something like that got me i'm not sure uh gnarls barkley is that right i i don't know is that right i don't know CeeLo. yeah are. there it is thank you joe CeeLo. oh he yeah, was yeah, the yeah. one that sang at that obama thing wasn't it at the oh i don't know uh i saw him singing at the uh wwe wrestlemania i saw that uh, yeah. but, uh, but anyway, she liked him. She's always liked him. And I get it. He's a likable guy. Uh, of course, he got in trouble for having sex with a little girl. But hey, you know, who cares? I guess. Uh, but anyway, she don't tell my wife that, please. Uh, but um, uh, she really liked him. And she's always watching his little videos and stuff. And I was like, all right, fine. I'll check out this YouTube thing. And uh, <sighs> that was a mistake. Clearly. Now look at look at you now. I know it's my wife's fault. I blame her for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's important. Uh, the legacy of Mr. Cooper should be remembered by anybody who's looking to understand their world that they live in a little bit better. Um, propaganda is everywhere. It's quite literally constant and it never stops ever. Uh, and William Cooper was one of the few people who was able to dissect it very pretty articulately articulately i can't even say the word um which mean which says to me he was either completely full of crap or he knew what he was talking about because you don't uh uh, you don't put on that much nuance to something unless you're trying to flim flam or you know what you're talking about and i think he knew what he was talking about that doesn't mean he was always right just means he knew what he was talking about he was mostly Uh, right though yeah, he was right more often than he wasn't when it came to actual things he said would happen. Nobody can actually put dates and times on things because I don't think even, you know, the elites know. I don't even think they know exactly when they're going to do something. I think they know when they've set things up and things line up and then they do it. But well, they it, it's too hard to predict exact, you know, dates and times. I don't think that's fair to expect out of anybody. No, and I, I, I didn't even, I haven't got that far, I guess, because I haven't heard him do anything like that, but maybe he did. Uh, but uh, he just impressed me with his historical accuracy, uh, because I see so many YouTube things, and I'm not knocking it, like I said, it's entertaining, uh, but they're just hardly inaccurate uh, mm-hmm. as far as understanding uh, language and how things came to be where they are today. Uh, and how many times have I seen uh, a, a YouTube person get up and said, did you know that the word son and the word son come from the same source? 
Well, yeah, in <laughs> English. <laughs> oh boy, Jesus, man! And and that's another thing that was kind of impressive with his the early because he in that show I was watching he did all the prehistory stuff before he built into the modern stuff, and I, yep. I that was cool. Uh, and uh, he also understood that this is another mistake you hear people on YouTube making all the time. They talk about, uh, even in your school history books, I've seen this mistake. Uh, whereas the our ancients worshipped the sun. No, they didn't. They, where? Show me. Because they didn't worship yeah. the sun. What they did was worship God, and it was his son. Not S-O-N, S-U-N. This is what they worship. They worship God and the sun being the representation of his power uh, from life uh, to birth to life to death, day to mm. night, right? Uh, it's also where the concepts, the early concepts, of so as, as above, so below come from. Um, and, it, you know, which a lot of people go on quoting that stuff. And it's all, it's fine. You know, I, I, it's all right. But, I mean, it's, it's, in, it's inaccurate. Our ancestors did not worship the sun directly. They, it was not a god to them. Now, what do you think they say? They, they, they say, Amen Ra, right? Yeah. What does that mean? You know, even though we say Amen today, of course, it comes from that. But Ra, it, it, it means praise to God's sun, meaning the sun in the sky. It's not the god's name. It's talking about the god's possession. Right, just like the word "Hallelujah," praise to the sun, the rising sun. That's where that word comes from. Christians sing that song all the time, and they have no idea that they're literally praising Horus over and over and over. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Right? Yes, that is correct. That's where Amen comes from. That's right. Uh, but I mean, just these little things always kind of, kind of uh, gets me. I, I don't really get upset about it, but uh, I just. Uh, but he's he he understood that. He was accurate with that, and I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm impressed so much that I'm going to watch the rest of it or listen to the rest of his series because I think he's a pretty interesting fellow. Uh, I did see something up above that I wanted to react to. Where is it here? Um, Behold uh, a Pale Horse is a it's a well written good book, but it is going to seem very dated now. Well, that's okay. Uh, I I still think I'll give it a read through, or I'll, probably I'll listen to it. To be honest with you. Um, finally, yeah, I agree there's with an audio book oh. of it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there is. Uh, uh, Eric seems to like the uh, Bernays idea. Cool. Uh, oh, here we go. This is what I want to mention. Uh, you guys have said some interesting things along the way. Uh, Bullet says, uh, but it's no different uh, than when Lady Gaga uh, does the all-seeing eye in her videos. She's not important enough to be part of anything she's playing at and uh, playing at with the imagery. Well, a lot of Hollywood elites always want to cover one eye or do the eye of Horus and all that kind of stuff. And they uh, clearly don't really know what they're talking about. They just want to be part of the elite crowd. And the thing is, is where do they see that? Well, they probably see things in certain parties that they probably had, they were on the periphery of, right? Um, but uh, I think it's interesting because that's something that uh, definitely another thing that Mr. Cooper would have talked about, I think. All these all these celebrities and stuff trying to emulate mystery school uh, symbology. Yeah. Well, I think I think some of them are in the know. Um, some are. Like some For probably. Sure. Yeah. It's probably true. It just depends on on you know which ones. I would say a lot of them that do it openly are just doing it because they think it's some kind of status thing, right? It's a status signal. Probably. They don't. Know. They have no idea what it actually means, and they probably don't even care. Yeah, they I think your Beyonce's and Jay Z's and stuff—it's just symbolism. It's imagery that they think is cool, and yeah, pretty much. But I would say the 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 bigger guys in Hollywood—I don't know if any of the actors, maybe, probably some of them, but I don't know how about many of them. But the the people who you don't see in front of the camera, those are the ones who know exactly what that is and are exactly. almost certainly involved. If not, there is some unbelievable coincidences that have happened consistently and continue to happen to this day. So, yeah, I, I think Hollywood is absolutely inundated with people who uh, are Saturnists at least. Um, or at least wannabes, yeah. Yes, or they want to be in with those 
those people for whatever the reason. The real power players you'll never see or oh, yeah. know their name. You don't even know their name. Yeah, that's true. Um, and there, and, and it's not odd that there's always been an elite. There's always been a priesthood, guys. And the priesthood, yes. priesthood throughout entire our entire history are the ones who really rule. And that's not even a big statement to make, right? No. Um, and, and uh, you know. Uh, I do get a kick out of him, but the, one of the things that uh, Mr. Cooper pressed on quite a bit, and at least what I, I haven't listened to all this stuff, but I listen quite a bit, uh, is the the fact that, and he's, and he's correct, the mystery schools historically have always used sex to their advantage. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. It's a very easy way to control humanity. Uh, and the mm. fact that uh, we have made several statements here on this show at various times, and understand I'm not a prude. You go have whatever sex you want to have. I don't care. Uh, well, you know, legal sex, please. Uh, but, um, you know, the, the point being is it is an easy controller of man because it's... It is something that is naturally in our DNA that is that drives us, and they are always using sex. And we look how perverse the world has become. Uh, it is radically perverse. Uh, and I don't know that it's any different that at times, like at the time of the fall of Rome or any other fall of other cultures, uh, it's just more easy to get the information than ever before because of uh-huh. the uh, the internet. Um, uh, but uh, he does talk about that quite a bit, and and he's not wrong. So. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think you're correct. I think we're in an age of of degeneracy. That doesn't mean it's never happened before, but oh, it has. That's what we have right now, and and it usually uh, precedes a great change. Whether it's a collapse, like happened with the Roman Empire, or at least the European side, well, the Central European side. Um, I think it's up to us to decide that as people, uh, we. The human race has more power now than it's ever had as a group, but it's also very, 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 very divided. And I think there's a there's a reason for that. That's not unintentional. Divide and conquer is quite literally the oldest strategy in human warfare. It works. It works every time. Don't let it happen. And it is happening. And it's happening because people are afraid to say the truth. They're afraid to say what they feel is the truth or what they know to be the truth because they're afraid of pick a reason, whether it be Google shutting them down, whether it be whoever shutting them down or just, you know, getting William Coopered and, you know, cops show up with a BS for a BS reason and murder you yeah. while you're trying, you know, do whatever he was doing that day. Um, I think we're I think we're at a pro- I, I've said this before. This year, 2020, is going to be a big year. I thought it was going to be a good year. I thought it was going to be a year where things started to turn around. It still might be. Um, I genuinely do think that that this stuff that's going on with this pandemic, and and you see people, little pockets of of pretty radical resistance popping up here, here, there, or wherever, to the point of one one of the states, I can't remember which state it was off the top of my head, but it was a Midwestern state. They planned on extending their lockdown. The people quite literally threatened the politicians to shoot them if they did. And they didn't do it. They said, okay, well, then we won't do it. Um, That's the solution. It's unfortunate that that's the solution, but it is. And even Mr. Cooper 20 years ago was talking about this. He doesn't want it to come to that, but they do, because that's all they respect. They respect brute, bloody force, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, the people uh, that normally are preaching the violence never solves anything are the ones that don't want you to uh, start using violence. <laughs> yes. Cause violence actually solves everything. Yeah. And One it's way. always been used to solve everything. Your government uses it. Your law enforcement uses it. Correct. Or at least the threat true. of it. Well, laws are enforced at the barrel of the gun. This is fair. This is fair. Well, we have three options. I would say as a, as a people, uh, to project our power, to project force or power, whatever you want to call it. Politics is just a, it's just a, it's just a, a stand in for war. That's all it is. When we're doing engaging, that's why it's so divisive and mean and nasty. What do you think war is like? Like real war. That's what it's like. It's not fun. It's not. It's not pretty. Um, it's it's a stand in for violence. We use politics so we don't have to use guns. Same thing with money. You can do that with money too. And many, 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 many people, including the people we're talking about, these elites, that's their weapon of choice. They use money. They control the money. They use it to control other people. Force is what free people use. It's why a polite society, an armed society, is a polite society. It's why people are generally more honest when the gun's on the table. 
right? Because there's no room for lies when your life's on the line. Um, I, I think that is the only recourse they've left us. They control the money. They control the politics and the politicians. What else do we have but our own ability to fight? And I don't like that. I wish it wasn't that way. But I didn't make the world the way it is. I'm just being. I'm just the one living in it. And I think Mr. Cooper would agree with me when I say something like this. We do not. Ha- we we must be the ones to stop it. Because if we don't, I don't think. I, I think it's over. I really do. I think we're going to go into a dark age, the likes of which we haven't seen since the fall of Rome. True. Well, but money, politics, you- and religion has the highest body count of anything. Yeah, yeah, but Mr. Cooper would not appreciate the boogaloo, dude. He was an anti I think he would. No, I think well. he would. I think he absolutely would. Yeah, listen to some more. I will. Uh, I will. His stuff. I will. Yeah. Am, I, because... am I allowed to say something here? You're allowed yes. to speak all you want, dude. Okay. Pacifism is utopian ideas, and it's not, and it's never going to be, at least not until we figure out some major things within science and how we um, produce um, produce the, the things that we need. And uh, that's not going to happen anytime soon. So what we have to have to maintain peace is vigilance. Now, a lot of us are just happy as, you know, boiled frogs as we sit in our comfort and uh, we just watch it erode around us. But for those of us who see that there's a problem, and there is a problem, and there is always a problem, we have to be ready to pick up arms and to commit violence in the name of freedom and our families and our loved ones and our country, if, if you want to go that far. And I still believe in, in the United States. Sure. As many problems and as many things that underpin it, as you've been talking about, I still believe the basic Constitution is a good thing. And from my perspective, a divine thing that says this is how we can be. But, you know, it's fragile. Everything is fragile. 72 hours from complete anarchy. Well, it's up to us here and there, just small nodes. And uh, hopefully we can keep it together. Mm. There's a thing in my church that says that the Constitution will hang by a thread. It's prophecy. And um, maybe that day is coming. Maybe. And well, it's uh, not as just an American, politicians that... That, that threaten the Constitution and the United States. It's half the population now. It is. Well, seemingly. Uh, but as an American, it is your charge to defend the country. It is. Uh, the yeah, militia right. are not a separate institution. They are the, uh, uh, how did the, uh, the founders put it? They are the soldiers in reserve. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, so the end as, of the day, the founders created the militia and enshrined it. Well, they didn't create it, but they enshrined it into law because yeah. they understood that they are the actual government. It doesn't matter what laws they make in Washington. If a thousand armed men say we're not following them, they're not following them, period. That's the end of the day. That is the final arbiter of what happens in this country is whoever has the force. And that's every country, not just well, this. The stuff country. going on today with all these shadow players and conspiracies – What's going on then? They knew it. Yes, well, sure. That's what they were. That's what they were planning for. Because well, this is nothing new. Maybe technology no. has changed. the The manner of delivering it has changed, but it was still going on. Well, you know, you guys have mentioned the fall of Rome and the you know it happened before several times here. Uh, well, first of all, the Roman Empire never fell. Uh, when it shifted to the Eastern Empire, which became called the Byzantine Empire, uh, uh, just keep in mind uh, when Rome was sacked, for sure, but the empire didn't fall. Uh, where do you Correct. think Constantine came from? Uh, but um, uh, the the thing that's interesting is at that time, because they were too busy uh, complaining and bitching at each other, doing the things they were doing, they weren't paying attention. Uh, at that time, transgenderism was all the rage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is ancient Rome I'm talking about, right? Yes. Nothing new under the sun, brother. The same cycle keeps playing out throughout history, and it's because good people, free people, don't didn't know what's going on. They just don't. They simply don't understand that freedom cannot be in. And for the most part, Roman citizens were free. Now, not they didn't have total freedom for everybody, but the citizens lived a pretty decent life usually, um, at least comparatively to that time frame. 
So they didn't know. They couldn't know. They, they don't understand. And today, this is the problem. I, I say this all the time, and it's what turned me away from libertarianism. Is It's not enough to defend itself. It cannot do it. Freedom cannot defend itself. You need a constant, vigilant force, violent if necessary, capable of doing it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that I know, I don't think, that was what the, the original intention of the militia was. That was their job. If the government ever became tyrannical, deal with it. Yep. Deal with it's, it however you have it. It's written in the federal papers very clearly. Uh, yes. But, um, you know, the reason I mentioned the Roman thing, I, I, there's, a, there's a method to my madness, of course, uh, is uh, the, uh, in connection with militia directly. Uh, because a lot of people think that, oh, the barbarians sacked Rome and they ended the Roman Empire and all that. No, they didn't. They were European. They were Roman citizens. And what yes. they were, in essence, were people who were sick of the nonsense who came in to try to right the ship is what actually happened. And it just split the empire into several kingdoms, which were later unified under Constantine, uh, of course. Uh, but right. um, uh, this they, they were acting like a militia to come in and try to save the empire is what they were Correct. doing. But yet throughout history, how were they been enlightened? Barbarians coming in and sacking a city. It's not at all true. They were Roman citizens standing up. History is written by the winners, or or it or it's at the very least not written by the losers. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, you, in the end, they did lose what their goal was. But you see the comparison I'm making, right? Absolutely. Um, I, I genuinely think we're in, we're in a revolutionary age. I've said that before. Uh, for whatever reason, and I think this is where a lot of the ideas of like gods of war and stuff came from. There's this spirit that goes across the world occasionally. I don't know if it's a, a thing that actually exists or if it's all in our minds, a weird psycho- psychological thing, where people have just had enough of whatever. It doesn't even have to necessarily be corruption. It just usually is of a certain way of things being done. And it seems to, for some reason, especially in European descendant c- cultures, happen all at once. And everybody just kind of has enough together and things start changing real quickly and real rapidly. And you go through these, these couple decades where things just pop, 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 pop. Things start changing all over. Yeah. Um, like, you know, the last time was the 17, 1776 to about 1805-ish. Was it just a, well, you could say 1810, really, 1812. Uh, the, it was just a rapid change all throughout the European world, oh, yeah. including America at the time. So I, I think we're in another age like that. And I think if we don't, so, hang on, my wife just came in. Um, Sorry, she uh, needed a guess. But um, if oh, she, yeah. if, no, if, those are good. You can take breaks for if, those. Yeah. If we don't come in, it, it, the people do. And I'm, I'm talking to everybody listening to this. If you care at all about the future that you're leaving for anybody in your bloodline, whether it's a family member, adopted person, I don't care. Somebody who you care about who will surpass you, hopefully, in years. This is important stuff. Mr. Cooper was talking about very important stuff. And, and I, I got the, every time I've listened to him, he seems like he's in pain talking about it. Yeah. Like, this isn't fun for him. He's not yeah. enjoying it. That's and a good point. That's, how you, that's one way you can tell if somebody's telling you the truth, is if they don't like telling you what they're telling you, it's probably the truth. Yeah. People don't like to speak the truth. It hurts. It's not fun. Well, we're going to have to let Model uh, have his piece here because it seems my cannonballs have upset him. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, model. Oh no, you're you're fine. You're fine. Am I fun or fine? I'll fine. Take both. I'll take I'll take yeah. both. I will. Uh, but uh, all right. You know I'm. You know I always try to uh, to push for us to like stay on topic. Stay on. Well, topic. we are on topic though. We really are uh, because these are all things that he, uh, Mr. Cooper, espoused. Uh, and these are things he talked about. Now, I haven't got far enough, which you you, you noted, uh, to where he might have become more militant. Uh, because <clears throat> I know in the early things I watched, uh, he was certainly uh, a part of a militia. Uh, he was one of the leaders of one of the top militias in America. I know that. Uh, but a lot of the things I heard him say uh, was that this isn't about a armed conflict. This is about information. Uh, but if he became more militant later, well, I'll, I'll, I'll find out. You know. Yeah, he did. Um, he became, uh, I don't know if militant's the right word, but I guess it is, but that has a connotation. I don't think he would have appreciated it necessarily, okay. but he definitely started to understand that 
I don't think. He, in fact, I just listened to oh, him. He that was a post later. We're not getting. We weren't getting out of this. Uh, we're not buying our way out of this, or something like that. He yeah, said he was outright warning the American people that yeah. they're coming for us. Yeah, that things are probably going to have to get violent before they get better. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. All right, well, guys, we it's are the only. It's the only inevitable the ending to when every ability to do things peacefully is taken away. Mm. When your court system is corrupted, when your voting system is corrupted, when your politics is so co-opted that you have this illusionary two-party thing that doesn't even exist, and you have people at each other's throats. That's why I, I always say it, American politics is WWE wrestling. There's one owner with yeah. two with all these different people. It, it doesn't matter to him who wins. No. He tell he gives them a script and they do what they what they they're told. No, it's and that is clear. that is your politics. It is. I, it I, mean, I hate to break it to you. So if you're if you're spending your days on Twitter arguing with uh, people on that are supporting another party or on the other side of the aisle, you really are wasting your effort. Yeah. Well, no, the purple people leaders definitely need to uh, stand up and do something. You're right. Um, but um, anyway, what's the number one issue right now? The most important thing. The most important thing is to never let these sociopaths and psychopaths get the guns. That's number one. If they get those, forget it. It's done. Yeah, no liberty is the is the thing on the set, and that's one thing I saw him say uh, several times: is uh, all that matters is freedom. That's it. It's the beginning, the middle, and the end. Uh, and I agree with him on that 100%. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we definitely are at two hours. We're at the end of our show. We don't want to go. I can't go deeper. i got to go to work. Uh, but um, uh, really interesting conversation. And thank you very much, Model, for suggesting uh, uh, Milton William Cooper. Because uh, I didn't know who he was, but I should have. And uh, now I'm starting to get an understanding. Now you got a lot to listen to. I do, and I will enjoy it because uh, I do have uh, radio on when I'm working all the time. So I'm like you. I need noise. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, thank you guys for coming in and being part of this. Uh, I think today was a very interesting conversation about uh, a man uh, who I think a lot of us can relate to. Uh, in regards to we worry about our future, we worry about our fa the future of our families, and uh, we see a lot of shenanigans and nonsense going on all the time. And uh, one thing I've said several times is everything we talk about here on TFT eerily connects, and it, and it continues to do so. Uh, but let me go through here and have everyone give their closing statements uh, for Slick uh, didn't have much to say today. So we'll let him uh, namaste us out if he, if he might. Uh, well, let's start with uh, Model. Go ahead, dude. Model. Let's start with Thundero then. They, they got him. They, they got him. him. <laughs> let's hope not. Um, I don't have much to say other than that, you know, I think... I, I've been saying it. I've been railing on it every time we do one of these shows. I think we're at a turning of an age, or an age of change, and it's it's up to us. It's not a it's not a bad thing. It's not a it's it's a good thing. It's what we should hope for. You should hope to live in times where you get to make a decision that will affect the future in a way other people don't. And I'm glad of it. Uh, and everybody else should be too. This pandemic thing that's going on just. <sighs> People need to, first of all, calm down. Everybody just calm down. The human race has gone through more pandemics than we have good times. We'll be okay. It, it, this thing is nothing it, it, in reality. At the end of the day, yeah, there's a lot of people dying. But at the end, it, when, it all, when it's all said and done in three or four years, you'll have probably forgotten most of this happened, unfortunately. <laughs> but you probably will. At least your life will have gone back to, you know, completely normal or close to it. Yeah. Hopefully. Now, if some of the stuff that we've predicted come true, we might be doing other things. But regardless, don't let any of it take away your joy. Have a good night. Awesome. Model, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, I had, uh, there's some oh, commotion no, no. outside. No out problem. Front. Uh, heli black helicopters? No, just to kind of tag on to what Thundara was talking about. Um, don't let this thing that they're pulling right now be too successful because it's just going to cue them to try the next one. And they're going to keep trying. 
No, I'm going to keep uh, trying. I'm sure they will. Uh, that is true. Uh, now, before I turn it over to Slick to uh, uh, namaste us out of here for today, uh, I think we'll kind of stay on this theme in a way. Uh, and uh, let's do Eisenhower next week. What do you guys say? Because it certainly ties into this conversation. Let's do I'm it. All, I'm all for it. Now, is Eisenhower going to tie into the Byzantine Empire <laughs> in, in the Vatican? I mean, is that is that going to happen? Probably not. <laughs> but I'm not promising anything, model. All right. Uh, but no, I'm Eisenhower should time. Uh, giving you a hard time. Uh, the uh, the hour of the time. Everything well, to come on now. Kind of go down a funnel. Cooper into... loved to talk about the same stuff I love to talk about. What are you on about now? <laughs> come on. Uh, but Eisenhower actually shouldn't go down that rabbit road at all. Uh, but it certainly connects to this. Um, uh, so uh, I think we'll do Eisenhower. That's a that is, should be a really interesting conversation, and it just continues the theme of everything's connected, baby. Uh, all right. Well, thank you all very much. And did Eisenhower have a crystal penis? He might have, Joe. <laughs> uh, anyway, probably. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I would. I, I would like to have a crystal penis. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, slick. Namaste is out of here, man. Slick. <laughs> Damn it, I just put, I pushed the wrong button. All right. Well, as strong as your arm and as sharp as your synapse and as big as your heart, always remember that you need to be humble for the things that you've been given and humble for the weaknesses that you have. Because, you know, the world isn't going to be kind. It's not going to be uh, fair or anything else. And when it comes down to it, as much as you know, you know nothing. So walk as a, a student. There you go. Namaste. I was kind of looking more for, forward to more something like uh, the strength of my rod as it hangs in front and thrust in and out of my power. That would have been better. Oh, my Every, lord. Everything is a penis. It is. It is. All right, well, guys. You know, the, thank the, you. The, the, you know. There is the iron rod, I can tell That's you about. But, well, uh, I, you we could get into the historical applications of the iron <laughs> rod if you'd like. Uh, but nevertheless, namaste. Thank you all very much. Come back next week for Eisenhower. Rock on. Later. <laughs>